very much, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the open consultations and MAG meetings for the 2015 cycle, the first one. Uh, just before we start, uh, I would just like to um, just say two things. Uh, when we are requesting the floor, if you want to request the floor, please just put up your nameplate and put it down like this, and then we'll write your name down, and the chair will call your name, and then you can speak. If you don't have a nameplate, just raise your hand, and then I'll indicate when I've seen you, and I'll write uh, your name down. Uh, before we start, I also have to read this. Um, uh, the ITU has asked me to read this. Uh, the ITU is pilot, pilot testing a system to allow the remote participation of delegates. When making an intervention remotely, please remember that your remarks are being interpreted into six languages. Please closely follow the procedure that was submitted to you. It is also important to keep the following points in mind. Audio quality deemed satisfactory by a delegate may be insufficient for interpretation purposes. For interpreters, the audio quality has to be near perfect. Audio quality may de de deteriorate without prior notice, eventually hindering an interpreter's ability to provide a smooth rendering. In extreme cases, despite their training and experience, our interpreters may have to refrain from interpreting altogether. A remote delegate may on occasion be asked to repeat a statement and may have his statement paraphrased by an official in the room. Thank you very much for your cooperation. And also, um, when you request the floor, when you're given the floor, could you please state your name clearly and slowly and also the organization you're from and whether you're speaking in your individual capacity or for the organization. Um, thank you. So without further ado, I'll give the floor to Ambassador Cocklands, the chair. So thank you very much, Angita. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Janis Karklinsch. I am Ambassador of Latvia and uh, the chair uh, of uh, the uh, IGF multi-stakeholder advisory group. So let me warmly welcome you to the open consultations uh, that are the first in, in the series in preparing the next IGF meeting, which will take place uh, in uh, Joao Passo, Brazil, uh, November 2015. So we are uh, holding this meeting in the premises of uh, ITU and uh, prior uh, going to adoption of agenda, I would like to uh, invite Mr. Uh, Francois Rancy, the director of ITU uh, t uh, Radio Communications Bureau, uh, to uh, make a, a welcoming uh, uh, remarks on behalf of ITU. Francois, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, Excellencies, uh, dear colleagues, ladies and gentlemen. It's uh, a great pleasure for me to uh, welcome you on behalf of Dr. Hamadan Touré, uh, welcoming you to the ITU for the IGF Open Consultation and Multi-Stakeholder Advisory Group meetings. Dr. Touré, I apologize for not be here today is certainly looking forward with great interest to hearing the discussions of today's meetings. Today is the first day of the last month of 2014, which has been a tremendously busy year for all of us, particularly with all the various meetings and new initiatives on Internet governance. Uh, last month also was held the ITU Plenipotentiary Conference, which uh, reviewed the three uh, plenipotentiary resolutions on Internet-related issues. 
Um, Mrs. Bogdan, this afternoon, will actually make a presentation on the outcome of this important conference. Wrapping up this very busy year in Internet governance, one thing which is clear and obvious to all of us here today is that the Internet is now universally recognized as a global public good. What is less obvious, perhaps, is that the exceptional growth of the Internet one of the greatest engineering feasts ever achieved, was only made possible by a level of collaboration and cooperation between stakeholders which has very few parallels in the history of mankind. As a result, the Internet is not just an inspirational story of coherence and continuity, but an inspirational story of community, too. Today, more than ever, we must continue to work together to ensure that all people, wherever they live and whatever their economic means, have secure, equitable, and affordable access to this vital resource, and that they can use it with confidence. We must also work together to harness the power of the Internet to help drive the post-2015 development agenda, empowering and accelerating suitable social and economic development for all. I firmly believe that we have the moral responsibility and obligation to expedite the implementation of this by understanding each other and finding better ways to work together so that we all become winners and partners. Welcome again to the ITU. I wish you very fruitful discussion over the next two days. Thank you very much. So thank you, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Ronsi, for your uh, opening remarks and uh, a warm welcome. Uh, certainly, we're uh, uh, very grateful to ITU for hosting us uh, during these uh, three days. Uh, that is um, a very kind of uh, symbolic gesture, specifically af after the renewal of uh, uh, ITU leadership team. Uh, in during the plenipotentiary conference. We're really looking, looking forward to uh, working very closely uh, with the ITU and ITU leadership, and um, so uh, certainly looking forward to have uh, many ITU representatives among us uh, during the preparatory process and uh, at the IGF meeting uh, itself. So, and uh, congratulations for you for your election. Um, so, ladies and gentlemen, before uh, going f further, I would like to uh, seek uh, approval of the uh, agenda of open consultations. Uh, agenda was uh, published on uh, the website. You have uh, uh, opportunity to uh, examine it. Uh, basically, we will be uh, going through analysis of um, uh, uh, positive uh, achievements during the IGF 2014, and we'll be talking through a few challenges that need to be taken into account in uh, preparing uh, IGF 2015. During that debate, there also will be opportunity to outline your vision about uh, IGF 2015 uh, meeting itself. So that, that debate should uh, bring us uh, maybe to lunch uh, or uh, slightly after that. And in the afternoon, we would be uh, uh, talking through uh, and receiving information about the processes linked to IGF or Internet governance that may have uh, some impact uh, to the shape of IGF 2015 meeting uh, in 
uh, Brazil. So uh, we will be listening presentations of outcomes of plenipotentiary conference of ITU, uh, uh, CSTD, uh, uh, WSIS plus 10 review preparations, uh, uh, the CSTD working group on hands cooperation results, the um, uh, ICANN, uh, CGI, uh, and uh, VEF initiative, uh, otherwise known as uh, 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 Net Mundial Initiative and WSIS plus 10 review uh, preparations that are scheduled in December 2015 in, in New York. So um, this is agenda for today's open consultations. And then tomorrow we'll be going into um, mag meeting uh, mode uh, with presence of observers as usually. So uh, are we uh, in a position to endorse today's agenda of open consultations. Any comments? Any questions? So I see none. We then may take that agenda is adopted and we will follow uh, our uh, work um, uh, to this adopted agenda. So, um, ladies and gentlemen, Abusing my power of the chair, I will take the floor now, as it is uh, suggested by the agenda. And uh, uh, I would like uh, to say a few words uh, how, I, uh, how I see the, uh, our task and uh, preparatory process of um, uh, next year's meeting. So first of all, let me start by uh, congratulating uh, new MAG members who were uh, uh, appointed by the uh, Secretary General to serve uh, in the multi-stakeholder advisory group and at the same time express my uh, sincere gratitude to those uh, MAG members who have uh, accomplished their uh, uh, round of, of duty uh, in the MAG and helped us enormously in uh, preparing uh, Istanbul IGF meeting. So this year is uh, of particular importance because uh, we are entering uh, preparation of the last uh, meeting of the cycle of five years. And uh, the preparations and the IGF meeting itself will be under uh, maybe strengthened scrutiny by uh, intergovernmental machinery who will be uh, talking and reflecting on the uh, implementation of WSS plus 10 outcomes, as well as a renewal of IGF uh, mandate uh, for next uh, period of time. Uh, you know that uh, this discussion is ongoing in uh, New York during the uh, second committee of UN General Assembly. There is a proposal of Brazilian, uh, sorry, a Mexican delegation on the table uh, which uh, uh, suggests extension of the uh, IGF mandate, but um, uh, it is not clear uh, whether this proposal will be ac accepted or not. The negotiation round will take place uh, in New York today, and maybe tomorrow we will hear uh, some news from New York uh, in this respect uh, on the uh, development. Ne nevertheless, uh, Whatever decision will be taken at the second committee, it will be uh, it will have impact on our preparations. Um, the um, uh, preparations should take uh, into account also uh, results uh, and dynamic in other uh, organizations and or forums where internet governance. Um, questions are addressed, and uh, uh, cer certainly everything that is linked with WSIS plus 10 uh, review and preparation for December 2015 meeting in UN General Assembly, uh, as well as ITU plenipotentiary uh, conference that uh, took place uh, earlier this year in Busan, Korea. Uh, as well as processes that are taking place in other interna international organizations. And uh, uh, UNESCO is, uh, is, is the first that comes to, uh, to mind. 
uh, specifically uh, taking into account the task which was given to UNESCO uh, at the last uh, general conference uh, to work on uh, uh, questions related to uh, freedom of expression, access, uh, ethics uh, on, on the Internet, and uh, the, uh, that will certainly have impact also on our preparations. So, um, in, in a run-up to Istanbul meeting, the uh, work of the MAG was guided by the recommendations of the working group on improvements of IGF. And uh, this, uh, this year should not be exemption. I think that this should be our, uh, uh, I, 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 wouldn't, I wouldn't like to call, call the name, but that, that should be the, the only reference book that we have uh, in thinking uh, about the IGF uh, 2015. Why? Because this will be the, um, um, the reference uh, to measure the efficiency and effectiveness of, of the uh, IGF MAG uh, when it will come to discussion about extension of the mandate of the uh, IGF. So therefore, that is uh, important to, uh, uh, to keep that in mind. I will send uh, around, uh, maybe slightly later, the uh, document which was prepared in 2013 analyzing how far uh, IGF and MAG has gone in implementing the working group uh, recommendations, but that would be uh, only for your reference and specifically for those uh, new MAG members uh, that would be interesting for you to read uh, and familiarize yourself uh, what what we're supposed to do. And uh, finally, I, I would like also to uh, mention the um, link or potential link that we may wish to consider uh, between the IGF uh, Brazil and WSIS plus 10 review process and the preparation of the high-level conference in December 2015. Uh, as you know, the modalities of the preparation of that intergovernmental meeting uh, suggest that uh, UN uh, General Assembly President should consult other stakeholders on the substance of the intergovernmental negotiations. Uh, the uh, two co-facilitators will be nominated in June 2015 by the UN uh, General Assembly President. And after nomination, most probably we will hear the outline of the process and timeline of uh, intergovernmental negotiations that will lead uh, to the meeting in December in New York at the General Assembly. Uh, our uh, IGF meeting will take place in November from 10 to 13th November, and that will be time when the stable draft of intergovernmental negotiations will, uh, uh, will be already in place. And um, we, we need to consider whether not at the IGF, but on the margins of IGF, we could arrange kind of consultation process between other stakeholders with the negotiating team uh, on the substance of uh, the uh, December document. Again, it, I'm just uh, outlining this idea for your consideration. If you, we will have a possibility to, to talking it through. But um, the advantage, as I see it, is uh, ability of reaching out a, a large number of other stakeholders, certainly much larger than if consultations would be arranged in New York at one point in time in the uh, second part of 2015. So we have a lot of things in front of us uh, for today and, and <clears throat> Tuesday and Wednesday. Uh, I will maybe talk more about uh, the expectations of the MAG meeting uh, tomorrow morning. And now I would like uh, to uh, invite uh, Ms. Isel 
uh, Kandamir, the chief uh, ICT expert from Information and Communication Technology Authority of, of Turkey, uh, to take the floor in capacity of the out outgoing honorary chair of the IGF. ISO, please. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Esteemed colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, it's a great honor for us to be here at the Open Consultation and MEG meeting on the preparation of next IGF. On behalf of Chairman of IGF 2014, Dr. Typhoon Argerar, I'm very pleased to present you Chair's report briefly. As is known, the 19 IGF held in Istanbul in September this year. There were over 3,500 participants on site and remotely from 144 countries. With these figures, this IGF, this year's IGF, noted the highest number of participation in its, in its history. As pre-conference event, as you may attend it, Turkey organized high-level leaders meeting uh, with a topic on capacity building for economic development. 33 high-level speakers from deputy prime minister, ministers, chairmen, and CEOs addressed on this important topic. Inspired by the unique location of Istanbul, overarching theme of IGF was determined as connecting continents for enhanced multi-stakeholder internet governance. People gathered on this team and discussed the issue from various aspects. During the preparatory work, MEG held two face-to-face -face meetings and seven online meetings. More than 200 workshops proposals submitted by the community. Proposals are examined and rated by MEC based on determined criteria. We all appreciated extensive and excellent work done by the MEC with the great assistance of IGF Secretariat team on the preparation of IGF program. With the energy of new MEC members, we are sure that MEC will continue to provide their expertise and knowledge for the success of upcoming IGF. Through the week of IGF, Pioneers, leaders, and prominent experts representing different stakeholder groups came together and exchanged their views and ideas. Lively debates and the maturity of discussions drew close attention and interest of participants. With the main sessions, workshops, and other events, important issues discussed in an open and interactive manner. New setup and format of the sessions contribute to inclusive discussions. Fruitful results and outcomes lead to recommendations and formulation of possible ways forward. As noted in the Chair's report, in this year IGF, there were, there were some innovations. Those are to mention a call by the MAC Chair regarding collection of inputs from the community on the action taken by stakeholders as a result of participation to IGF. Best Practices Forum on five challenging issues and also new format and the content of the IGF summary are the novelties to this year's IGF. Dear colleagues, I would like to give some of the highlights underlined in the Chairman's report. For renewal of IGF mandate with longer cycle, participants prepared statement on, statement on the subject for United Nations. To achieve sustainable funding for IGF, Internet Governance Support Association formal launch in Istanbul. Input was formulated by the participant on the right to privacy in the digital age for Human Rights Council. Many participants emphasized that there is a need for increased interaction between the governments and interested stakeholders on trust to cyberspace. Recommendations were made how and how the debate on network neutrality can be taken forward. To facilitate the connection for the next five billion, call was made for the inclusion of ICTs and internet access in the post-2015 development agenda of the UN. YAUT representatives emphasized the need to strengthen existing mechanism and empower YAUT in the internet governance ecosystem. Issue of IANA transition and enhancing IANA's accountability were um, discussed on this uh, IGF. We believe that recommendations made and next step envisaged needs to be considered carefully for the preparation of next IGF in Brazil. 
having this chance, we wish Brazilian administration great success for a best ever IGF. I'm sure that it will be a very remarkable event. We look forward to be there. Thanks for hosting for the 2015 IGF. As a final remark, we would like to thank you, UNDESA and IGF Secretary team and MAG once again for their close collaboration and cooperation and support in the organization IGF 2014. Thank you very much for your kind attention. So thank you very much, Arso, for your uh, presentation and uh, certainly uh, for hospitality that uh, 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 Turkish government has extended to the IGF, uh, which uh, helped us enormously in uh, succeeding uh, in organizing uh, this, this meeting. So, and, and also thank you very much for uh, sending the report uh, of the uh, IGF Istanbul meeting to the ITU plenipotentiary conference. Uh, I think that that was very uh, useful move uh, by a Turkish delegation and Turkish government, and certainly that informed the discussion about internet governance issues at the plenipotentiary conference, and uh, uh, certainly contributed to the uh, better visibility of uh, IGF. Uh, at the uh, plenipotentiary. So thank you very much. Now let me turn uh, to the uh, 2015 honorary co-chair, uh, the Ambassador Francisco, uh, Benedicto Francisco Filo, the Director of the Department of Scientific and Technological Affairs from Ministry of External Relations of Brazil. Francesco, please. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair, and let me start by also thanking uh, the previous speaker from Turkey in, for the kind words and the wish of success for the meeting in Brazil. We were very happy to be in Turkey and participate in this important meeting, and for us it will be certainly a challenge to, to stimulate the community to, for the same level of interest and participation as we had in Turkey. So thank you very much. Uh, it is a great pleasure and an honor for me to serve as a co-chair of this preparatory meeting on behalf of Brazil. And by that, I wish to specify that not only on behalf of the Brazilian government, but on behalf of the Brazilian Steering Committee, uh, which is also here represented by the Executive Secretary, Hartmut Glaser, who is very well known by all of you, and other members, uh, Flavio Wagner and Carlos Afonso. Uh, well, we are very happy to, to be able to contribute to the success of this meeting in Brazil, and we'll be uh, available, Mr. Chair, to contribute uh, uh, with you and the larger community in order to prepare for a very successful meeting in Brazil. Uh, as we start the preparations, uh, we are uh, very happy to see the level of interest that has already been uh, expressed through the contributions we have received. We have been gone through uh, the contributions and we see there's a lot of good ideas uh, and proposals coming forward. We look forward to working with all of you to ensure that this meeting will indeed uh, close this first cycle of IGF uh, in a very successful way. Uh, building on the nine years of experience we have had, have had in regard to the previous uh, IGF meetings, uh, building on the innovations that were introduced at the meeting we had last this year in, in Turkey, uh, we see there are many elements that add, that will contribute uh, in our thinking for this. I would like to highlight the importance of reviving the best practice forum, dynamic coalitions, uh, at the same time also some very important developments that have been taking place in different fora, uh, exciting developments such as the uh, ICANN transition, uh, the hosting of Net Mundial, we were 
very happy and very proud to host this uh, year. Uh, we, th we feel that this indicates a renewed interest on the part of the community at large in regard to internet governance issues, uh, also in regard to what is taking place in other fora. Uh, so we see there is a very uh, favorable ambience for uh, to strengthen IGF, to reassert the role of IGF in all these uh, framework that is being uh, refined over the last few years and especially in the last one and a half year. So again, we'd like to restate our interest and our uh, willingness to work with all of you to ensure uh, we'll have a very successful meeting in Brazil. I'd like to welcome all of you uh, to Brazil, to João Pessoa next November and we'll certainly be counting on your energy and your commitment to, to this process. Thank you. So, thank, you thank you, Benedicto, for, for, for this uh, encouraging statement. So we're very much uh, looking forward to, uh, to the preparations and to meeting itself. So now let us move to the next uh, agenda item uh, that uh, we agreed to examine, and that is uh, stock taking of uh, IGF uh, 2014 and uh, setting expectations for IGF 2015. So uh, during uh, this uh, segment, uh, I would encourage you to uh, sort of reflect on uh, what did work, uh, what uh, lessons we would need to bring uh, uh, to the uh, preparatory process of 2015 and maybe also how you see the uh, outline of um, uh, Brazil meeting in light of uh, experiences we gathered uh, in uh, Istanbul. So this is, uh, since this is the open <coughs> consultation process, we would be uh, looking to different inputs and uh, uh, maybe uh, first I would like to invite those who are not MAG members to take the floor and, and after that uh, also MAG members to uh, join the discussion. Uh, before opening uh, the floor for, for debate, I would like to invite uh, Secretariat uh, uh, Chengetai to uh, maybe briefly uh, introduce the uh, results uh, of the survey, uh, which uh, I mean, of, of, the, of the comments, uh, which were made uh, by uh, delegates uh, during the comment period uh, on this uh, very subject, and after that, I will be looking uh, to the discussion. Chengita, please, you have the floor. Thank you very much, Anas. Okay, I'll just read a summary of the synthesis paper. Uh, which summarizes all the contributions um, that were received. The purpose of reading it is so that we don't repeat all the comments. Um, if you hear me say a comment and then in the comment period you could comment on something else that has not been already said. Um, starting off uh, with the comments, um, there were comments on the improvements in the preparatory process were noted in many contributions. Um, such as seeking inputs from all stakeholders on suggested themes and sub-themes prior to the first open consultations, combining the open consultations with the MAG meetings, and also holding regular MAG virtual meetings. These were all considered to be improvements. And elements that distinguished um, IGF 2014 from previous IGFs, uh, the IGF made progress towards becoming more outcome-oriented the five IGF 2014 best practice forums and the resulting outcome documents represented a good step forward in this regard. The new format and substance of the chair summary was also noted as a good development. Other notable aspects of the meeting were mentioned, the launch of the IGF Support Association, the launch of an African de declaration on internet rights and freedoms, and the endorsement of a message that was forwarded to the Human Rights Council on um, panel on privacy in the digital age. 
for the main sessions, um, for the positive aspects, the topics of the main sessions and focus sessions were well chosen and reflected current high priority issues. Uh, comments also praise the U table format with more moderators standing and moving between the panelists and attendees, uh, which was heralded as an improvement f uh, for more interactive sessions. Uh, cr critics, they said that some of the sessions had too many panelists and they suggested keeping the sessions and durations below two hours. Um, there were some three hour discussions and this was um, said to be too long and if there were a three hour session, it should be split into two. For workshops, some contributors um, commented that there were too many workshops held in parallel and some of the workshops addressed similar topics, so they say that the workshop streams should be reduced. Uh, last year we had 11 workshop streams. The schedule online tool that was used in IGF 2014 for the, um, the, the schedule was seen as an improvement. Appreciation was expressed for the timely availability of session transcripts and video recordings on the IGF website, as well as for the multiple ways to remotely participate through the WebEx, Twitter, um, webcasts, and YouTube. Aspects that could be improved was the room naming, the signage within the venue, Wi-Fi access, interpretation for more sessions, and less speeches, more interactive debates. Uh, suggestions and recommendations regarding IGF 2015, including the preparatory process and intersessional work. Uh, the recommendations were made for the MAG and the IGF community to actively engage in intersessional work, which is seen as critical to continuing the discussion and debate on key issues. Two themes were proposed for intersessional work, policy, menus for connecting the next billion, and impact of internet on jobs and skills. For themes and issues, one input recommended that the IGF community should agree on two to three high-level themes and should try to work through out the year towards the production of common best practices or policy messages. The IGF should address policy questions that are controversial and or time critical and that are currently lacking any other multi-stakeholder mechanism for global coordination. An input noted that it was timely and relevant for the IGF to explore themes at the intersection of ICT and development with an in internet governance focus. One proposal for the overall themes of the 2015 IGF meeting was internet governance for sustainable development and promotion of human rights. Other inputs suggested surveillance, cybersecurity, online privacy, and primary themes of the 2015 meeting. Workshops. One recommendation was made to encourage organizers to suc of successful workshops to submit follow-up proposals for the following IGF. For the agenda, some inputs noted that the IGF could benefit from a more structured agenda with eventually fewer workshops. An opposing view was also expressed, noting that the number of workshops should not be reduced as the dyna dynamism of the IGF comes from workshops. There was also a comment noting that an alternative, as, as an alternative to the usual IGF schedule, would be to have each day of the IGF focused on a specific issue with uh, various sessions in various formats. As far as the dynamic coalitions were concerned, there was a recommendation that was made for a more structured process to, develop, uh, to be developed for dynamic coalitions Further discussions should be held on whether and how the 12 dynamic coalitions that are currently active within the IGF should contribute to or support the IGF's intersessional work. On more tangible outcomes, while still maintaining the key characteristic of being an open platform for discussion, the IGF should continue to develop more tangible outcomes one recommendation was made to develop innovative ways to capture the conversations that occur at the IGF and share them globally wherever possible. The 10th IGF could take a step forward in this direction if it were to practically use designated main sessions, workshops, and other sessions 
or working groups to develop non-binding opinions, recommendations, or policy principles that stakeholders could use to address currently pressing internet-related issues. On linkages with other IGF entities, con contributors noted that the IGF should establish better coordination across the inter internet governance platforms and initiatives, strengthen its ties with regional and national IGF initiatives, and the IGF should ensure that there are regular exchanges with the various internet governance forums, meetings, and initiatives throughout the year. On remote participation, increasing remote participation, e-participation at the annual IGF and during intersessional work were stressed by many stakeholders. Dedicated working groups and additional funding should be sourced to address this important issue. Other suggestions were a more developed dynamic landing page on the IGF website for, a, for all aspects related to remote participation and remote participation guidelines for participants. Remote moderators should also be empowered to insist that remote participation in interventions should be considered. On the youth, several inputs noted that more youth should be represented as speakers and organization, organizers of sessions. Logistics. Improvements were encouraged in the following areas. Media operations, badging, beverages, food and drinks, broadband and Wi-Fi connections. Uh, host country website, printing, etc. And there was also a contribution that a professional event organizers, organizer should be also um, engaged. Uh, general suggestions for the MAG, um, it was suggested that the MAG could establish a series of working groups dedicated to critical issues such as communications, outreach, intersessional work, best practice forums, etc. The MAG should continue to organize working groups in specific areas, provide organizational leadership for them, and open them to those willing to participate and contribute to the process. Um, I think that's all for the summary and for the IGF mandate, but that's not for the meeting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Non, ce n'est pas nécessaire. Ce n'est pas nécessaire. Euh, mesdames et messieurs, donc... It's not necessary. Ladies and gentlemen, we are now already entering our working uh, tempo. And we, I'd like to underline that we have simultaneous interpretation in the six United Nations languages. So anybody wishing to speak in any other language than English is welcome to do so. Could we have Spanish, Russian, Arabic, Chinese, or French? Not any other language. And now, I'd like to open the session, open the floor for comments. Any participant? The, the consultation process. Uh, while you're thinking, please, uh, before taking the floor, uh, make, uh, no, introduce yourself. That is for the sake of, um, uh, also for the sake of uh, 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 transcription. And I see the first, uh, first request. Uh, please, uh, Victor Victoria. Uh, thank you. Actually, I'm not Victoria. I'm Virginia. But <laughs> um, I'm in good company anyway. Um, I am a new MAG member, uh, Ginger or Virginia Park, from Latin America via Venezuela and the U.S. and Diplo Foundation, which is global. And my major link here my major prominence or my major worry concern is that online participation whether it be remote or local because I'm not sure who's local and who's remote right now um, is that first of all participation online takes place 365 days a year remote participation is way more important than we give it credit for because most of our participation of everyone even that is in this room is online 
So I think we need to make sure that we design the sessions and that in our criteria for the workshops and all the sessions, we make sure that we're including the people who are not in the room and that not just the starting with the IDF secretariat, that the organization of the meeting, then the organization of each session and each workshop take into account how they are, and this has already been done, but theoretically more than in practical application, so that we actually include in full participation, not just obs observation, and that dynamic movement that we're trying to generate within the room include the people that are in the rest of the world who are actually the majority. So I would like to be very active in pushing this, and that includes, of course, any accessibility issues for people with disabilities, because that works very well to get together. So I would ask that we please take that into account right from the very beginning, which, of course, is now, and that any suggestions, and I'm willing to put my energy behind my words. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Virginia. This is what I want to say, but I didn't, I didn't, didn't find uh, quickly enough your name on my list. <laughs> so please, uh, further request. Who is willing? Can we move to the next agenda item then? We are satisfied with the with the review which was done and, and conclusions that were outlined by Chengitai. Virat. Thank you, Chair. Good morning, everybody. I was, um, we were waiting to make sure that the observers and the new MAG members first had their opportunity before putting up our flags. Um, I think there will be other colleagues who will want to join in on the session. Firstly, our uh, a huge thanks goes out to um, Turkey um, and the government. We didn't have enough time in the last MAG meeting on the last day at the IGF to um, pay our tributes to the outstanding work uh, that has been done in Istanbul. Um, just for the record, um, 1,600 delegates from 128 countries participated in Baku, Azerbaijan, that went up to over 2,000 at this very excellent um, IGF arranged by the Indonesian government in Bali. Um, and in 2014, broke all previous records by clocking 3,694 participants, of which 2,403 were on site. Um, they represented 144 countries, which is nearly 75 percent of the UN membership. This is an all-time record for IGF, so a huge achievement, uh, and uh, big thanks to the Secretariat as well as the, the government. My numbers may be off by a little, but I think that's, that's what came through. Uh, the developing countries constituted nearly 60 percent of all participants. Um, that's a big vote of confidence by developing countries, something that we aim to include and make it inclusive. Civil society were the largest participants with nearly 779 participants. And contrary to the popular belief that the government is not very active, uh, they were actually 23 percent of all participants on site were government, um, only um, third, very close to the business community uh, in terms of numbers. Um, there were several innovations that have been spoken about, so I won't get into all of those. But I think um, a few, few deserve a mention, um, especially on the main sessions where the chair had uh, pleaded and all, actually everybody agreed to only have two and a half main sessions as compared to five or six main sessions. Uh, and the subjects that were chosen were carefully picked uh, but more importantly, I think um, when the Net Mundial conference was held in April, uh, and in spite of the fact that the decision had been made to hold only two and a half, um, for some of us who are new here, um, there are six slots available for main sessions if you look at the four days counting out closing and opening ceremonies. So we started with two and a half, went up to three and a half, 
and after the May Paris conference, a third slot was opened up and a three-hour session on net neutrality was held, which was a prominent outcome um, piece that was stated in the Net Mundial statement. So uh, it showed that there was flexibility in the IGF process to actually take on board important and contemporary issues. And um, it was also after many IGFs um, that almost all the main sessions had full halls. Um, there were between um, 80 to 90 percent attendance. So I know there is a comment about uh, not keeping it for three hours, but nobody left the room. Um, that's the other um, side of, of, the, of the equation. And many of the main sessions were actually broken into two parts, and so that worked really well. People were allowed to do exercises and stuff like that, so that was kind of an interesting. Um, uh, there was also the issue of turning the lens on IGF itself. Um, there was a full main session on the Internet governance itself and, and its future and how it's been doing, and there was a frank and and formidable discussion with uh, some governments sort of giving us very candid feedback on what they thought is working and what's not working. So it wasn't as if, you know, the IGF or the MAG was playing softball for themselves. Um, you've spoken about the open, transparent process that was adopted. Um, there was also um, an improvement in the regional and the gender representation on almost all panels. We compared this to the previous ones, and I think Istanbul saw uh, not only higher participation, but also higher participation from regional uh, developing country governments, most of whom served on the main sessions, um, much helped by the U-table format that was, that was played out. Much has been spoken about the best practice sessions, so I wouldn't go there. Um, on the workshops, I think the pre-announced criteria, which improved in many ways by giving higher points for first-time submissions, for developing country submissions, and for specific policy questions. Um, and so to step back to the main session again, I think the point about picking policy issues through a public consultation uh, and then including them through the moderators was a major improvement. In fact. Uh, our session, the one that I was co-leading with 16 of my uh, very able um, volunteers and friends from the MAG, had a, had a Facebook page for a month which invited comments, and then that went into the discussion. So the online engagement uh, has been commented upon was actually a, an improvement. Um, we have to say that the location of Istanbul made the cost of uh, participation for participants. Uh, that was a big factor. Um, five-hour flights from Asia and, and Europe, but also the, the range of accommodation and the location, and it really helped bring people in. And I think we need to sort of give some thought to how, when the location is right, you can get so many more people to participate, especially from developing countries. Uh, this major Skype in the numbers is basically attributable to um, the host countries finding a location that had hotels from five stars to three stars to guest houses, everything almost within walking distances. Um, I also want to give some, some thought to the uh, improved IGF website and the color coding of programs that I think went really well with several people. We didn't have the time to explain the use of that, but I think the innovation that was formulated there was very useful. Uh, the, the Secretariat took this uh, great initiative to change what was would, what would happening in the past. A very substantive session by the youth, which was held in the main room. Uh, I wish more of our colleagues had attended that. Um, I think three of us from the MAG supported that session. It went exceedingly well. We are really proud to see one of, one of the members here. She was the uh, moderator of that session, and now she's here as a full-time MAG member, and we welcome her. Uh, with open arms, that's an outstanding uh, development for the MAG. I don't think we've had a youth representative before on the MAG, um, and that's sort of a, a reflection. Um, there was an enhanced use of um, remote participation, also use of social media. I think um, 
IGF 2014 saw 1,297 remote participants. Um, there was an increased participation due to um, platforms such as Flickr, Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr, um, and as I said, there were Facebook sessions organized. Um, I just wanted to um, close this by saying that the MAG um, last year embraced a lot of, uh, well, I think starting 2013 when they started embracing issues such as surveillance and a big session was held, uh, we should remember that 45 of the 90 workshops were directly or indirectly related to human rights, which was uh, a big part of uh, the workshops, and again, a mandate that the MAG and the IGF took on from the Net Mundial outcome statement, as well as um, a special main session that had not been planned in February, but came in after May, after the April conference. So I just wanted to leave all those thoughts for our, our new uh, MAG members and also observers to think about. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Virat, for your comments. Uh, Izumi, Izumi Aizu. Thank you, Chair. Uh, Izumi A or Izumi Aizu from Tokyo. I'm the outgoing or retired MAG member, so I, did, I just came here to say goodbye, guys. <laughs> but that's too short to say for a three-day meeting. Um, uh, to follow what Bilal said, I'd like to share my, some of my observation of the IGF 2014 in Istanbul. Especially, we have done some ad hoc interview during the IGF meetings, and it was very rewarding or helpful for a MAG member to understand how the participants of the IGF really feel and taking things back home or not. And I would really encourage you guys the new MAG members to do something similar, not only just um, organizing the conference per se, but at the same time listen to, especially the newbies, the new participants, not only in the orientation session solo, but I did that during lunchtime or coffee break, uh, also from those from developing countries, those who are not really exposed to the IGF um, podium so far. So uh, here are two things I would say, like, uh, May, well, although we did only a few, about 10 um, of myself, um, but many said they feel very much isolated unless they are the speaker or the organizer of the session. Um, you may think, well, well, there are many people frustrated with the l lack of interaction time because there are too many speakers, et cetera, et cetera. But I think we need to really consider more about some of the new ways of organizing conferences these days. There are certain ways like unconference, BOF, BOF, or open space. That's one modality. Or you may have heard flipped classroom. One of the uh, sort of the leaders of this field suggested to me, he was the first time participant to IGF at Bali, that he prepared all the presentations of his session um, in video in advance and let the audience or participants watch it before they come to Istanbul so that it's ready for them to go into the direct interaction. So there are a number of sort of innovative ways um, that we could really uh, try out more for the new um, meetings of IGF. And I also, again, I, I, I just want to repeat that MAC members listen don't really only to speak that to the many, uh, many people at the IGF, that is very valuable. And last but not, perhaps not least is just to pick up with what Dinja said, the, for the, we know the value of the remote participation, but also the limitation of, and the, the beginning with the term remote, it sounds like we are the center, we are the, and they are the periphery, they are remote. And they feel also very remote <laughs> from the center when they participate at, during the night for their, you know, um, uh, time zone. And they need to stay very concentrated if you try that. To, and then how much you get for the intervention? Not that much. So you, most chairs say, oh, are there any remote participants after all the major points are covered? Or when do you find nobody in the, in the room to take the floor? So that's perhaps we could use the technology 
on the internet and the latest ones. The Net Mundial did a good job of showing the videos from Indonesia or India so that we feel much more intimate and much more kind of coherent feel of the participation amongst or throughout the globe. So these are somewhat um, I felt as I might, I'd like to share uh, for, from the outgoing member of MAG. Thank you very much. So thank you very much, Izumi, for your thoughts and proposals. Now I will turn to uh, Ms. Shita uh, Laksmi. Sorry. Uh, hello. My name is Sita Laksmi. Uh, I'm a new MAC member from Indonesia. Um, um, I think one of the suggestions that I would like to see in the IGF 2015, learning from 2014, is that since IGF is a very new discussion in Indonesia in particular or in Southeast, or, or in Southeast Asia in region, I would like to uh, ask whether the MAC member or, or when we do the proposals uh, review, we can make an affirmative actions towards several percentage that goes to the developing countries so they are able to be part of the IGF discussions. Because IGF just started being a discussion uh, in Indonesia in particular, and we are trying to have more tangible outcomes out of it. Thank you. So thank you. So the, your, your question is, uh, the answer to your question is affirmative. Yes, we, we have been preparing uh, uh, Istanbul IGF. We did a little bit of positive discrimination, and we, we brought uh, uh, proposals from the developing countries who were lower graded than, than maybe others uh, to, the, to the agenda simply to give, give the, the preference um, uh, to representatives from the developing countries. So now the next on my list is Marilyn, Marilyn Cade. Thank you, Chair. I'm going to open my comments by saying how exciting it is to see all the participants who are here, not just the MAG members, but broader representation from the community, and to repeat a comment that I made last year to rounding laughter when I announced that I was a new MAG member and that I had uh, been a very active participant for eight years before becoming a MAG member last year. So my comment to Azumi and all other um, MAG members who are rotating back into the community is that, in fact, you must not leave us, but you must continue to attend the planning sessions and to contribute your uh, expertise. The MAG has a narrow function, and we are very dependent on the broad participation of all of the stakeholders. And Azumi, you and others who have been so active as MAG members in the past have really helped to bring us to where we are today. So I just want to offer that comment to those who may be thinking that they are rotating out of the MAG. Um, I think we, in fact, think we still own you. That was not the entire purpose of my taking the floor, though. I want to uh, make a comment about an innovation that we introduced last year that I was um, perhaps um, very committed to and able to contribute to and found it to be a very beneficial uh, contribution. And that was a shift away from the role of the MAG as central in the planning of workshops and even the introducing of workshops and really limiting the role of the MAG in workshops, not uh, MAG members no longer uh, as individual MAG members um, uh, propose workshops. We evaluate the workshops, we coach, we mentor, we do plan the main sessions. That has been really um, a big change, and I think it also has done something that's vitally important. Since we are committed to bring in new players and new contributors, we as MAG members have the opportunity to play the role of coach and mentor to help to facilitate bringing in lots of new voices. And I'm very pleased to hear some of the suggestions that Azumi, for instance, and others have made about uh, new formats, because I think opening our minds to new formats also uh, will enhance the opportunity for broadening participation. 
I, too, want to uh, support the perspective shared by um, Bharat Bhattaya about the, uh, the location of Istanbul really did provide the opportunity for all of us, regardless of what stakeholder group we were in, to, uh, I think, put more uh, encouragement into the opportunity to attend because of the accessibility of the location. Um, finally, I want to make a comment about <clears throat> one of the benefit benefits that I have seen of the attitude and openness of the Secretariat to including other groups who want to come to the IGF and perhaps hold a side event uh, in parallel, but then integrate their participants into the IGF has helped tremendously in bringing in some new voices. And I will just give as an example a uh, couple of groups that I have had the benefit of uh, collaborating with. That is WAVE, the Women's Alliance on Virtual Engagement, and also the, um, uh, the Arab um, Business Internet Alliance that brought a number of attendees to Istanbul, held a parallel meeting, but then integrated their attendees. So 30 to 50 new attendees at the IGF who were might not have been able to come to the IGF if they had not been able to have that parallel uh, meeting as well. They were able to participate in the village, and that also uh, elevated their access to others from the community at IGF who came into the IGF and met with them. So I want to continue to encourage that openness of attitude that we have brought of if there's a room available and groups come and legitimately are interested that there's a way for them to uh, take advantage of being in the space with us. Thank you. Thank you, Marilyn. And next on the list is Avri. Avri Doria, please. Thank you. Uh, Avri Doria speaking. I am a new MAG member. Um, I wanted to talk about two concepts that, that I, I think we need to work on. One is the whole notion of audience. Uh, at last, in fact, at every MAG meeting and at many meetings I go to, we talk about panelists and we talk about audience. And, and I think that that is a problematic concept when it comes to a forum. When it comes to a forum, I think we should be really working hard at the notion of everyone being a participant. Some happen to be up on the dais and some happen to be down on the floor at a particular point in time. But I think that when we have this concept in mind of audience, we, we tend to sort of have a separation and, and we end up with a row of talking heads talking at these people who are sitting and listening as an audience should. And I think that from the very beginning, we really need to be casting what we do in terms of how do we build a forum type of behavior where there is a very dynamic conversation, dialogue, well, dialogues between two, but a conversation and discussion among the many participants in a room and also those that, that are attending remotely. It was, it was the, the reference to remote being remote that, that, that reminded me of that. The other one has to do with the notion of intercessional work. I'm very happy that we're starting to do work between the two meetings. But when we think of intercessional, we're sort of thinking that the work is bounded by the meetings, as opposed to the meetings being a point in the progressive and steady state of the work where, where you, you, you sort of coordinate the expression of that work, you make it wider, you have a goal that you drive to. But again, if, if it's intercessional, we still have the meetings as the main uh, marker, as the main milestone, as opposed to the work and, and, and reaching the outcomes. So I just like to sort of suggest that as we move forward, when we come to these concepts, we, we, we try to also look at the, at the obverse of, of the concept and, and, and try to basically not have audiences and not see 
the yearly meetings as anything more than an annealing point where the work comes up, comes forward, some of it gets, gets brought, taken to other places, and some of it then continues. Thank you. So thank you. Thank you, Avery, for your uh, thoughts. Uh, now I see we have online participants willing to speak. Yes, we have an online uh, intervention from Anfriette, who will speak for herself. Anfriette, I'm giving you the floor now. It seems, seems we have a slight technical difficulty. We will come back to Anriet, and uh, I'm, I'm going now to the next uh, speaker, uh, Isok. Thank you, Chair, and good morning, everyone. I'm Constance Bomler from the, the Internet Society, uh, the technical, who's a part of the Internet technical community. Um, I, I won't uh, reiterate some of the points that were made uh, this morning, but I I uh, would support uh, what Avery just said about the intercessional work um, and, and also other points made by um, uh, Mirlin and, and, and Virat this morning. Um, I, I'd like to focus um, on the outputs or the outcomes um, of the IGF and just say a few words about ex the experience of the best practices and a few thoughts on possible uh, new outputs for, for the IGF. With regards to, um, to the best practices forums, um, I think it was a, a good first step for the IGF, definitely. I'd like to emphasize a few things that were not said um, in, the, in, the, in the summary of the um, uh, Taking Stock Synthesis paper um, and highlight, uh, first of all, that um, uh, new individuals and new communities have come to the IGF through the best practices. Um, on the mailing list, we have about 100 to 120 people, people who do not go to the IGF uh, normally, who will probably not go in the future, but who have an interest in the work that was kickstarted through the best practices. Um, from here, the question is how do we sustain that uh, community? How do we make sure we retain these individuals, these experts in the IGF community? and actually get them involved in future editions of the IGF. Um, I think throughout my comments you'll see that it systematically boils down, of course, to the resources of the Secretariat, um, but it also shows that we have uh, tremendous opportunities for the IGF today. Um, I would also emphasize that um, through the best practices, uh, we did not negotiate text. And I think that's, that's an important point because there are some sensitivities about finding the right balance for IGF outputs. Uh, we want to make progress on difficult issues, but at the same time we want to keep the, um, the non-binding nature of the IGF and we don't want the forum to become a negotiation platform. Um, we talked about uh, the means, the resources needed to uh, support intercessional work. I think this also uh, raises the question of the role of MAG members versus secretariat versus uh, external um, consultants or help that can come in support to, to the secretariat. Here, um, I would like to say that um, I, I think that the MAG as um, Marilyn said MAG members have a very specific role, but at the same time we cannot substitute ourselves to the Secretariat. And as the IGF strives to develop more outcomes in the future, I think this um, barrier between the role of the Secretariat and MAG members will be extremely important because we want any outputs, any outcomes to be perceived as um, neutral. Um, Allow me also to, to add um, that uh, with regards to format of outcomes, we've talked about the best practices. There were also some good policy messages coming out of IGF 2014, a message that was uh, sent on behalf of one of the groups to the Human Rights Council. I think that was a, 
the demonstration that the IGF has a lot of potential to offer um, in, in this regard. Um, at the same time, it seems that some themes lend themselves to best practices, themes that have been around for a while where we have uh, documentation, existing practices that can be compared. Other themes would perhaps be more suitable for policy messages through main sessions or other mechanisms. Um, but emerging issues such as ethical data handling or other new issues might be more suitable for um, other types of uh, formats. Um, finally, and just to conclude uh, with regards to the main sessions, um, IGF two th it, in my view, IGF 2014 really gave the impression that we had a hybrid format. We had introduced a few new elements, and at the same time, we had preserved elements from the, from the historical IGF format. I think it's important to um, see the, the, the historical elements that need to be maintained as we develop and, and take the IGF forward. Um, at the same time, we also heard that um, many participants felt that main sessions were too long, there were too many main sessions. And I like the idea that was expressed, I think, by um, maybe it was Shengatai that presented it as part of the synthesis paper, of having maybe one theme per day and only one main session at the end of the theme to conclude the work and ensure we have progress throughout the day uh, towards some sort of outputs that would be reflected uh, through the main session. Thank you very much. So thank you, Constance, uh, for your proposals. Now I'm going to United Kingdom. Mark, Mark Carvel. Yes, thank you, Chair, and good morning, everybody. Mark Carvel, United King Kingdom Government, Department for Culture, Media, and Sport. Um, first of all, I'd like to express on behalf of the UK government our deep appreciation to Turkey for hosting uh, such a successful uh, ninth IGF and achieving such uh, record levels of participation. That's a great achievement. And, uh, and as you said, uh, Chair, um, it's very timely as we um, uh, engage in uh, at the wider UN level scrutiny of the IGF that we uh, ensure that the IGF continues to build on success and evolve uh, as it has done in such a uh, demonstrable way. And um, Virat earlier on uh, recounted um, the breakdowns of stakeholder participation. And uh, just a footnote with regard to, UK, to government uh, participation, uh, the UK government delegation in Istanbul was the largest ever. We had more policy makers from across our administration attending in person than ever before. And I think that is a reflection of the strength of the, uh, of the program, the importance of um, participation and engaging with with other stakeholders in such a uh, uh, open and, and dynamic way. Um, with regard to uh, other aspects of, of the Istanbul IGF, we very much appreciated the innovations uh, introduced there, uh, the sense of uh, um, capturing more concrete outcomes but in a way that, uh, as, as has just been said, not, not to try and negotiate these things, but to see where there is consensus or a variety of opinions that can help our understanding of the issues. So that's, that's a very important uh, uh, conceptual sense of the, for the IGF that, that uh, we should uh, continue to um, uh, hold, hold dearly. Uh, secondly, the best practice forums, uh, very, very effective, very good, and I think it was just the right number of, uh, of forums, and indeed uh, the dissemination of the results of those is an important thing that we should uh, ensure is taken full regard, and uh, that has already been noted as well. You know, the, the, the sort of taking forward of the outcomes of so many experts coming together in, in a best practice forum that is truly global. Um, new formats, yes, very welcome. And um, the, the commitment to developing intersessional tracks of work, 
We very much support that, uh, and we look forward to the discussions here at this meeting about how we implement those so that we can ensure the work between now and the Brazilian IGF really does help secure effective moving forward of issues uh, by the time of the Brazilian IGF, so the Brazilian IGF then will be able to take them further even more without risk of going over the same ground that's been uh, looked at before at previous IGFs and without the risk of duplication. Um, so that's a very important uh, development of this uh, IGF uh, that was instituted in Istanbul, the commitment to intercessional activities. Um, just a few final points. Very much um, appreciate um, the commitment of those youth participants in Istanbul, and we support uh, elevating their participation into uh, center stage activities of the IGF uh, in Brazil um, to give them more visibility and, and, and help refresh our understanding of issues and what, what is of importance to, to, to young people. Um, main sessions, uh, I think the number was about right in Istanbul, but, it, but still we have to um, work a bit harder to ensure that they maximize participation, that we avoid clashes with other program activities, give the uh, main sessions enough uh, space. Um, and we, we should also look at the number of panelists. I, I do sympathize with the view that for some of the main sessions, there were too many, too many panelists. So I, uh, those are my comments for now. I hope that those are helpful. Thank you. So thank, thank you, Mark. Very helpful. I understand that uh, remote uh, participation is not yet ready. Or we can try. Uh, we would like to try it now. Otherwise, they will fix it after the first coffee, uh, if Henriette. And then we also have a second one that has been in queue for a while with Subi. So we will check to okay, see if these let's two. Let's see if we can get Henriette. Uh, Henriette, if you're ready, I'm going to I'll give you the floor right now. Thank you. Okay. Uh, um, Ginger, I don't think the mic is working. Can you read my comments? I pasted them in the chat box. Yeah, actually, Henriette, we, we hear you. Uh, we hear you, and you can go ahead. Should I go ahead? Okay. Now I need to find my comments again. Um, <laughs> um, let me just um, get them back. Okay. Well, as uh, Izumi, um, I'm also an outgoing MAG member, so thanks everyone. It's good to be here. I, I plan to continue. Um, I noted Marilyn Cade's comments about outgoing MAG members being owned by the MAG, and Marilyn, I look forward to the challenge of being owned by you in particular. Um, so just some remarks. Thank you to the host country and thanks to everyone. I think the IGF was a success, even though we want to improve it. So just a few key points um, to add to the Secretariat's excellent synthesis. Um, I agree that we should strengthen the intercessional process of the IGF, um, and this has been said by Avri and others. In particular, I think it can help with the outcome orientation through the best practice forums, which I see as part of the intercessional process. It can also help with workshop preparation. I think if we have more workshops, um, that are prepared intercessionally, we will have stronger workshops. It can also help with developing, developing country government participation if there are intercessional events that involve them, which are then synthesized or built up to some process at the global IGF. Um, I think it can also include or succeed in better inclusion of regional IGFs. One of the criticisms of this year's IGF was that some of the regional IGFs were not adequately reflected. And then it can assist with remote participation. 
Um, then secondly, on human rights, um, as Vera pointed out, there's, there's um, a lot of interest in this topic, and it's a complex topic that has sub-themes. And I really do think we need either a main session at the IGF um, to synthesize discussion on human rights related topics or a round table as we did this year. And the round table was very successful. So I thank the Secretariat and the MAG for um, allowing us to include that. But it still clashed with various right, rights related workshops. So it wasn't able to synthesize everything. Then thirdly, I think on event design, I agree with Izumi, I think we do need to be innovative. Um, not to employ external facilitators, but just to make sure that we design the event in such a way that the workshops complement one another, that workshops on one theme that address different facets of that theme are not run in parallel, that workshops are well coded, um, and maybe the device of a theme a day is one way of doing it, and then having some form of synthesis. But I think some professional design support can help. Also to address the issue of participation that Avery brought out. And then my last point is just to note that we had in Istanbul the Ungovernance Forum, and it was a very successful device for bringing in more local voices, and it complemented the IGF, so I think that is good. But I also think the MAG should guard against such parallel events um, preventing um, uh, the internet governance community from raising critical issues inside the main IGF. So yes, a parallel event is fine, but we shouldn't avoid addressing challenging issues inside the main event. Um, and that's it for now. I'll be with you for the rest of today and, and look forward to the rest of the meeting. So thank you, Annette, for your contribution. I will take now next uh, uh, on-site participant before going to next uh, online participant. So next on my list is uh, Cheryl. No? <laughs> Sorry about that. Thank you very much. Um, my name is Cheryl Miller, and I am a new MAG member this year uh, from the business community. Uh, I work for Verizon Communications, and I just wanted to thank you all. I actually participated in the meetings last year, and everyone on the MAG was so welcoming, uh, and so it, it was a really uh, great environment to come into, and so I'm much appreciative for that, um, and for, to the Secretariat as well. Um, I have two comments and then a quick question. Um, one observation that I had, I guess as an outsider uh, through last year's process, was how balanced uh, the relationship was between the host country and the MAG. And I understand that there are different responsibilities uh, that you both have. And so I guess another thank you and another compliment to the host country um, for really kind of creating that synergy with the MAG. I think it definitely helped uh, 2014 IGF uh, added to their, that success that was there. Um, another comment that I had, I guess I'm hearing from a lot of MAG members uh, some good things about the main sessions and some things that perhaps uh, didn't exactly go uh, the way they would have hoped for. Uh, so I note that many have said that there was good balance in terms of uh, gender balance, regional diversity, and so that was definitely a plus. Um, but on the other side, there were too many speakers on some panels, and I definitely noted that as well. And this is where uh, my question comes in. I, I'm just curious, as a, a new member, uh, whether or not there was a specific rule uh, that was put in place to kind of encourage the enhanced balance uh, or, or what the structure was. I don't know if any of the uh, folks who were a part of organizing the main sessions have any comments or thoughts on why it turned out that way, since so many people seem to indicate that they didn't want so many people uh, in terms of number of participants. But it seems the we got the balance right on the other end. And so um, thank you. So thank you, Phil. I will let uh, fellow colleagues uh, to clarify that, that question. Um, I think that the, there's a one very important guiding principle. We should be guided by common sense, whatever we do. And if, if we, will, we will apply that, I think we're on very safe ground. Uh, now I'm going to online participant that I understand is, is Subi.
please please go ahead Subi. hi Anas can you hear me yes we we do hear you thank you um it's it's really exciting and thrilling um everyone my name is Subi Chaturvedi and I come from India and uh I um, now teach at a state university with about 800 engineers. This is my third year on the mag, and each each year is equally thrilling and exciting. Um, Yanis, thank you for your excellent leadership. And what we have this year as a mag is a phenomenal team with such an amazing, rich skill set. So um, some quick points on what, what I think worked and what we can retain in essence. I think the engagement between the the host country, uh, Turkey, and the light-handedness and the fact that they were so facilitative has been uh, amazing. It's 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 beautiful in terms of how it translated. Um, we had excellent chairs for main sessions. Um, our session in particular looked at IGF, Internet Ecosystem, and the role of IGF and how is it that we can strengthen the IGF. Uh, perhaps some of the things that have been raised, uh, we could respond to that as well, because as main sessions, it's important to speak to a lot of essential questions and formats, we can't have a blanket approach to all sessions, uh, whether they're main sessions or workshops. So I think that uh, sensitivity to the issue and to the format is something that we retain going forward. Uh, what was of particular delight to me was a 13-year-old, not quite 14, as one of the closing speakers. I thank the secretariat um, and the chair for this innovation. I think that sends a very positive message. This is both about nimble-footedness, innovation, and the ability to listen and respond from the floor, and that is the essence of the IGF. I welcome the fact that we do not spend about 75% of our time on negotiated outcome documents because the ability to bring people and create a safe space is what I'd like to see cherished um, going forward this year on the 10th edition. We've already been through the numbers and it is enthusiastically reaffirmed by the greater presence of people to travel and engage. Um, on the remote participation, yes, I think it's a very important tool and shouldn't be like watching television. So um, people participating through remote and being recognized prominently, um, the remote moderator being positioned in a room prominently and, and uh, consistently reaffirming the fact that those who are not in the room are part of the conversation is something that is fantastic and we need to keep working on that. Um, the substantive chair's report, I thought, was, was again a highlight. Um, two, two pages, four pages, and then um, a, a phenomenal, uh, extensive report that came out as the chair's summary, um, uh, taking that concept forward worked fantastically for me. Um, I completely agree that um, according to the Tunis agenda in paragraph 72, one of our key tasks as MAG is also not just organizing the program, but also enriching the knowledge agenda and contributing to capacity building. Um, outgoing colleagues like Lada and some of the others have done very good work. So these are uh, standards that have been set. We have to continue working at that and best practice forums uh, were truly a translation of that. Um, meeting a lot of people from developing countries, being one myself, um, I think those are themes where we're enriching uh, in terms of good practices. They might not be the best. They might not um, be uh, immediately relevant or completely fit every ethos, but these are ways in which the IGF has contributed and you have given things to people that they actually take away. Um, coming back to the main sessions also, something that worked was the deep well format and the fact that some of the main sessions were able to make the moderator stand up and walk the room. And, and that's, uh, that goes back to Avi's point of not treating people who are in the room as, as audience, but also integrating them while the session is on, not keeping a question or um, an answer format at the end of when the speakers have spoken, but looking at it from the... 
looking at it from the perspective of in keeping that engagement alive and vibrant while the session is on. Um, what what I also would like to see, um, I don't know if somebody's already spoken to that, is is more volunteers so that MAG members are not running around in, in these sessions. Um, what was also amazing is the, the Secretariat managed to give one of the youth workshops and put them in the main session. So um, I welcome especially the three young members on the MAG. There is a lot that we have to learn from them. That workshop was one of the best workshops that I attended last year. So in terms of a resource pool and seeing more of them on main sessions as panelists, these are things that people who represent Net Mission and the young uh, colleagues on the MAG are already working in terms of initiatives. Um, intersessional work is very welcome, but what uh, I would also like to see more reflection on is the parameters. How is it that we will decide on themes and where is it that we will uh, go from there? So that framework, I understand, will evolve organically, will be taken offline through virtual concepts. Um, there was this year as well, there was excellent support for remote moderation. The number of microphones in the room for audience engagement matter. They matter hugely. If you're in a workshop and you just have a microphone up front and uh, people are already speaking, it's difficult if you have a roving microphone and more volunteers around in the room that I know that has a cost input, but that's something that, that actually works. Um, what one would also like to see um, is a, a venue which is also contained, something which is easily accessible because accessibility and giving priority to people with disabilities um, is something that one really wants to see. Um, so in, in terms of, um, um, I mean, going, going forward, uh, three key points, more women, more youth, more children, also more governments in speaking roles, um, a venue which is not um, too difficult or too expensive to be present at. Um, the insistence of having more young people and more new people on main sessions and main panels. Um, and, um, and more guidelines and clarity on mergers um, and feedback for uh, the rejected proposals or proposals that didn't make the cut. So these are some things um, yes. along with a very specific input, which is, is taken in a multi-stakeholder format uh, while we are planning the session from the host country, particularly civil society groups that are part of the process from the initial days of planning. Um, that's about it for okay, now. Thank I will you. Stay online. Thank you, thank, thank you, you Subi, for your for your input and uh, uh, clarity. What we need to be taken into account going forward. So next uh, on the list is uh, delegation of United States. Good on, good morning, everyone, and thank you, Chair. Thank you, Giannis, um, and uh, welcome to everybody. Um, I want to join. My name is Liesel Franz. I'm with the U U.S. Department of State. And here, along with my colleagues, I want to um, join uh, everyone in thanking the government of Turkey for hosting such a successful and vibrant IGF this year. And also extend our thanks to Brazil for once again hosting as we look forward to the next IGF 10 in 2015. Um, we also want to thank Mexico for their kind offer to host in 2016. Um, thank you, too, for this uh, ability to p uh, put in a submission for the call for input, and uh, we, we certainly did that. Um, so I won't belabor our um, submission now, but I did want to highlight just three things that, um, that uh, we mentioned that might be useful for the discussions. One of the things that um, we have always uh, appreciated is the nimbleness of the IGF in in being able to have timely uh, discussions about whatever is going on in the internet space that year, because it moves so quickly and is so dynamic that as we look to workshops that um, either themes or workshops that we might encounter, leaving space for, um, for whatever the issues of the day are has been something that has been very useful. Um, Secondly, as we look to the capturing the output and capturing the conversation, um, 
the best practice forms and other inputs and outputs that have come out from the IGF have been very useful to continue the conversation and appreciated the comments made earlier that um, the spirit in which the best practice forums outputs were done were, were uh, collaborative and not negotiated outcomes. Um, I'd like to join my others in congratulating the new MAG members. Uh, to this year's IGF planning process. Um, and one of the things that we highlight in our submission has been uh, addressed today as well is to encourage you to continue to look at the community, not just old MAG members, but those that have been coming to the IGF uh, for years and those that have, have just started to come, to continue to look to incorporating the, the community into the planning effort as well as, um, as is to capturing outputs that might be useful for going forward. You know, we really believe that the IGF provides a space free from the pressure of formal decision making and negotiations where all stakeholders can communicate and understand each other's perspectives and thereby develop more collaborative relationships that then um, help reduce misunderstandings across them when we engage in other venues. And I think that is why the interactive nature that have so many others have talked about of the workshops and the discussions that take place at the IGF are, uh, is so important. And so as we look forward, as we look to uh, developing workshop criteria or uh, workshop formats, that that interactive nature is really something that is, um, that is uh, emphasized. Um, also, I'd like to join others and, and, and pick up on your comment, Chair, that we uh, are looking toward the extension of the uh, mandate for the IGF um, next year. And w the United States believes that as we do that, we must look at it as retaining the nature of its original mandate, um, even as it continues to evolve and improve to meet the community's needs in the discussion and the dialogue that is so, um, that it is really its value. Um, so thank you. I look forward to the discussions over the next couple of days, and uh, good morning. So thank you very much, Liesl, for your comments. And now I'm uh, turning to uh, uh, to Miss Key. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm not sure that I can pronounce your your first name right. If you could, if you could <laughs> introduce yourself uh, for the future reference, so to say. Thank you. Um, hi, my name is Jack, Jack S. M. Key, um, and I'm with, um, I'm with uh, Civil Society, APC, and I generally work on women's rights issues. Um, I wanted to give a couple of comments. One was around the capacity building track. I think that is a very, very um, important and useful priority area for IGF to be improving on because that also directly supports kind of more diverse participation of um, different groups of people. Um, and for me, especially, I'm, more, I'm very interested to see how this can promote active participation and not kind of like audiences, as we was talking about, um, of women's rights um, groups as well. Um, and, um, and also speaks to the, to the recommendation for different modalities and how we can look at this in much more creative ways to think about active learning processes. Because I think um, this is really quite critical, especially for um, trying to encourage um, new and different actors to come into the space. And I think national and regional IGFs can also play a role in terms of building capacities of um, national and regional actors from different stakeholder groups. And I especially welcome to see how this can directly also feed into the kind of global IGF processes and vice versa in terms of um, sharing of learnings. And perhaps this could be even a best practice um, thematic area. Um, and. Um, the other thing I wanted to talk about was also to support the whole focus around intersession, intersessional work um, and to also look at capacity building as one of the um, key areas of work for intersessional work. Um, and um, also the colleague from ISOC, um, uh, the speaker from ISOC, um, was talking about how best practices um, forum is actually in a way also facilitating greater participation of more diverse actors into the process of IGF without actually being present at the IGF itself as an event. So I think that um, in it, um, that is something that is um, really worth um, exploring more into to really look at um, how these particular thematic and topical areas um, can really also um, facilitate um, more discussions by 
by, I guess, um, unusual suspects into um, internet governance and policy areas, especially with the greater interest around um, demonstrated around human rights issues and how IGF has really demonstrated a kind of maturity around human rights issues as well. And that will translate into um, looking at human rights um, uh, I guess in more depth, so things like disability issues might come up, sexuality, gender, and so on. So I think that is also uh, um, uh, something to take into consideration. And finally, um, uh, the report card. Um, I'm, we've been working on the gender report card for three years already, and uh, really thanks to the collaboration and support by the Secretariat um, to also make sure that this is part of the formal reporting process. Um, and it's been incredibly helpful to see um, in the past three years how the report card has helped us to have a sense of to what extent um, gender has been in incorporated and included into the workshops. Um, but somehow the report card um, findings are not included in the formal reporting for, for the statistics of IGF itself and maybe there needs to be a bit more of a stronger connection there and to see how we can also improve the report cards to not just look at numbers but also to look at the extent of the substance of the content and how uh, numbers in participation, whether, whether or not that translates into in inclusion of um, the issue. Thank you. So thank you very much for your observations. Uh, before going to Turkey, I will uh, ask uh, uh, online participant to take the floor. I have. Uh, I will be reading an intervention from Brazil from Marília Maciel of the Fundación Getúlio Vargas. Marília says. Best practices forums were a valuable exercise that produced interesting documents. They could further benefit from clear questions proposed to the experts from the outset based on real problems. The work of those involved in best practices should be more visible. The reports should be open for comments before the IGF through a structured consultation process. Net Mundial could offer insights on how to do it and intercessional work should be used for that. From, from what we saw in the reports, the best practices fora are still not the concrete outcomes that the working group on IDF improvements called for. Outputs could be a guide to policy development elsewhere. More efforts need to be done in IDF Brazil to render the IDF more outcome oriented and useful. And lastly, the call for inputs on actions taken by stakeholders as a result of participation at the IDF should be made again this year with full publicity. These this material could make a strong case for continuation of the IGF. Thank you. So thank you very much. Now next, uh, Government of Turkey, please. Hi, much better. Huh? Okay. <laughs> well, I'd like to, this is Isan Durdu. Uh, I am uh, speaking on my personal capacity this time. And uh, I would like to thank uh, to the chair, to you and uh, UN DESA and Secretariat, the MAG members and the whole community for their contributions in the success of IGF 2014 Istanbul. Um, and uh, I'll be honest with you, at the beginning I had some concerns because there were so many events taking place this year, so I wasn't sure how the attendance will be, uh, but luckily it turned out to be a good one, a high uh, number of participation uh, from uh, not just developing countries, but also from uh, uh, develop, uh, developed countries, but also from developing countries. And, um, and uh, I 100% agree with the summary made by uh, uh, Shengetai and also Virat made very good summary on success f factors on uh, the success of IGF 2014. Uh, that also could be a guidance for the future uh, work that we are doing here and the host countries that will be hosting the next events. Um, and I know that uh, the contribution, uh, the summary made by Virat there were some other contributions from Mar Marilyn and Sh uh, Cheryl and uh, Subi and uh, Lysel, a few others. Uh, yes, just a few more things. Uh, one thing was, the, uh, especially for the uh, attendance coming from the developing countries, was 
uh, really helped with the ease of obtaining a visa uh, free of charge and uh, and we also introduced the e-visa be able to get a visa online was quite helpful uh, I st strongly suggest uh, that we can have uh, the similar uh, uh, work for the future I mean the host countries can also think can consider uh, using the similar uh, uh, visa uh, issue processes and uh, one other thing was the ease of the flights uh, the frequency and the number of the flights and the carriers uh, serving to Istanbul uh, was quite uh, uh, useful but but also the possibility of uh, using low-cost carriers uh, many people that I met in Istanbul they came they arranged their flights in advance and at very low uh, uh, prices. Uh, so that was also an uh, important uh, factor in obtaining a high attendance. Of course, all the listing of uh, uh, be able to find uh, accommodation for uh, all possible levels uh, and ease of transportation within the city uh, was also a good contributor. And, uh, and let's not forget, Istanbul is uh, quite uh, interesting city uh, for many people. They all uh, would like to be part of uh, any event taking place in Istanbul. And uh, um, again, uh, I think uh, uh, the I'm sure the our uh, host uh, country doing the, uh, the next uh, 2015 IGF will. Uh, will be a very uh, will, will do their best to make sure that it's a very successful event uh, hopefully even better than Istanbul as, as far as I know I attended uh, net mundial and it was quite successful and personally uh, I trust uh, uh, Brazilian colleagues that organizing the event uh, well thanks again uh, to departing uh, members, uh, MEG members contributed to uh, IGF uh, 2014 and earlier ones, of course. And uh, con congratulations for the newcomers and uh, thank you. And uh, nice to be uh, part of this beautiful team. Thank you again. Bye. So thank, thank you, Isan, for, um, for your comments. Of, of course, as we saw from uh, uh, at, the, at the closing session of Istanbul meeting, the environment where we're uh, uh, planning to be in November 2015 will be slightly different from, from Istanbul. So instead of uh, historic buildings, we will have a, a beautiful sea. Uh, but uh, nevertheless, uh, looking forward uh, also to a uh, change of environment. So next uh, on, on the list of speakers uh, is UNESCO, please. Thank you, Chair. My name is Hu Xianhong from UNESCO. First, I'd like to echo with other colleagues to congratulate uh, the success of uh, IGF in Istanbul. And we look forward that this success will be continued and advanced in the forthcoming IGF in Brazil. Uh, secondly, that uh, as Mr. Chair has mentioned, that uh, UNESCO is uh, conducting an uh, internet study in uh, five areas, including free expression, privacy, access, and ethical dimensions, plus uh, options for futures for, as mandated by our member states. We have presented this study in the Istanbul IGF and have received so many significant inputs from the stakeholders there. Uh, again, this shows the special value added of IGF to IGOs such as UNESCO to engage with the stakeholders and uh, um, discuss those complex and um, very educating issues. This really help us inform our uh, strategy and also with our member states to the uh, post-2015 agenda. And so this link to my next point uh, that um, I'm also impressed by the very vibrant discussion on human rights related issues in the uh, IGF in Istanbul. Uh, I'm uh, also very uh, aware that um, 
Uh, actually, the UN is so much mobilized to promote uh, free expression and also other human rights uh, as privacy on Internet uh, following the uh, HRC uh, resolution on the promoting human rights online and also the UNGA recent endorsement of privacy in digital age. And now we are having a parallel conference organized by the Office on, on Human Rights uh, Commissioner Office on the Human Rights and Business in 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 the United Nations here. Um, I really agree the proposal by a former speaker to have a special a major plenary main session on human rights in the forthcoming IGF in Brazil. Uh, this will also help the United Nations on its um, ongoing de debates to shape the post-2015 development agenda by highlighting human rights aspect since the Internet is really advancing and also posting challenges to the all human rights uh, in a profound way. Uh, lastly, uh, let me come back to the UNESCO study. It's well underway. We are going to discuss the first draft of study in, with a conference we are organizing in March, the from 3 to 4 in March uh, 2015. And we are also very happy to host the next uh, MAG meeting in the same week. So I hereby welcome all of you to UNESCO in the first week of March and both for the UNESCO conference and also for the MAG meeting. Thank you. So thank you, thank you very much, Liang Gong, for your uh, comments and also for invitation. Of course, we need to we need to see how that fits uh, uh, the um, our pre uh, timetable of our preparations. So we will be discussing that uh, tomorrow and day after tomorrow. Next uh, speaker on my list is Fatima, please. Thanks, uh, Mr. Chair. This is Fatima Cambronero from Agencia Argentina, a civil society organization. I agree with the contributions received and shared by the Secretariat. I will, I will also add some comments, trying to avoid repetitions. Uh, regarding the main sessions, I agree that three hours are too long. I prefer a main focus session on two hours of duration without a workshop running in parallel. Uh, regarding the panelists of some main focus session, we have we had a lot of panelists in the in some main sessions. Um, in some cases, this not allow with the interaction and the dialogue with the community and the remote participation. I also think that we need put uh, more focus on sessions of regionals IGF. Uh, I am also a member of the program committee of the LAC ICF, the Latin American and Caribbean ICF, and in, for this year we are, we are not we were not invited to the regional ICF session when we had seven years of experience experience of uh, the regional ICF. I think we need more inclusive regional ICF sessions for next year. I agree with the comments on Constance on best practice forum. I think we we'll also need more outreach on that best practice session. This year, this worked very well, but uh, I think we need more people involved in the best practice session. I also think that we have to reduce the number of the workshop running in parallel. Uh, in some cases, we had a uh, workshop uh, running in uh, focus on the same topic or similar topic at the same time, and it is complicated to assist of them. In relation to the organization of the main sessions, I consider as MAG members we have to have a, a, a special uh, rule or something, a rule, and we can involve, we, that say we can involve uh, as organizer in only one session to avoid the capture of the organization of the main sessions. Uh, I, I also think we have to elaborate a guideline to the moderator of the main session to uh, help them to include the community and the remote participations in the conversations. I also think that we have to be careful in the inclusion of external events in the agenda of the official, uh, in the official agenda of the ICF 
to avoid confusion for the participants. Uh, I also consider that we we, ha we uh, have to set the sub ten of the next IGF in this meeting, and also we have to create some working groups related to this uh, sub ten to start working on the organization of the main focus session and, the, or, and start to discuss about that sub terms uh, at the beginning of the next year. Uh, I also think that we have to push the capacity building activities in similar sense than this year. We had, uh, this year we had regional pre-webinars in different languages and related to the organi organizers of the regional IGF and also seeing that this year, the next year, we have to improve the pre-webinars. Uh, and I also agree on the comment of the intersectional work, and I will stop now. Thank you. So thank you, uh, Fatima, for your uh, comments and suggestions. Uh, next is Olga, Olga Cavalli. Thank you, Chair. Sorry. Can you hear me? Yes. Um, this is Olga Cavalli from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Argentina. I am a retiring MAG member. After many years, I have learned a lot from this group, and I want to thank all the colleagues that have shared their knowledge and, and were patient with me when I started, and I have tried to help new members also when, when they came in. Um, I am also very happy to see so many friends from the region in, in the new MAC composition, so I am happy to help them if, if they need. I plan to be around, and I plan to contribute not as a MAC member, but as a member of, of my government, and we, we, we really like this process. We want to congratulate Turkey for a very successful, our friends from Turkey, from very successful IGF. We thought it was very a very important meeting for the history of the IGF, and we are extremely happy to have a new IGF, the next one in Brazil, uh, our brother country from the region, and, uh, and, and, and also the next one in Mexico for Latin Americans, um, especially for some of us that we have been working in, in trying to engage the, the community in the region. This is a major a major thing, a major achievement, and, and I really want to thank Brazil for hosting two times the IGF. I remember the first IGF in 2007 being a very nice one, but, but at that time we were a smaller group. The meeting was not so well known, not so well attended, and at that time we, we, we saw that the participation of the Latin American countries was, was not so strong. So since then, some of all the regions, some in, of us in the region, we have been working towards that. So I would like to, to, to stress this value for our Latin American and Caribbean region and, and try to work with our colleagues from the region and at the global level to, to work intersectionally to engage our our community as much as possible. We, we, are not, uh, we are a region that is not so well represented in all these international meetings. Sometimes they are very far away from us. We are very, especially Argentina and other countries, very in the south, it's very expensive to travel. So um, this is a great opportunity. So I would encourage all of us to promote intersessional work in the regional level. Uh, the regional IGF, we will host the next School of Internet Governance in, in the region in Costa Rica. Very happy to do that with my friend from Costa Rica. In April, we grant fellowship to all the participants. So please tell us if you want to participate. Participation is open. We're receiving a special of interest now. We have the national initiatives in different countries of Latin America. We have ISOC, our chapters, and many activities and, and many other things happening. So uh, I encourage our friends in the region to engage our Latin American um, and Caribbean community and make them uh, stay, not only come for one or two IGFs, but stay involved. Uh, as a general comment, I won't repeat, um, we, we as, as Argentina would welcome new formats and happy to discuss with other colleagues during these days. We, we think it's very important to have the human rights or a session or a, an open uh, table, or, but, but, it, but it really has a space and it doesn't collapse with other activities that could diminish the participation. We will keep in, being involved with capacity building activities. 
I also would like to support the comment from our friends from APC about gender reporting and gender information. Um, and we believe that IGF could address a problem that we see as uh, important, is a total lack of very few gender balance in leadership in ISTAR and internet governance organizations. So um, I would be happy to join maybe our friends from IPC. I'm trying to find them, where are they? Uh, in, in preparing perhaps a workshop about reviewing why that, ha that is happening. We have a lot of women, well-prepared, good professionals that could be perfectly part of those boards and leadership positions in this ISTAR and other organizations in internet governance. Thank you, I will stop here. Thank you very much. So thank you, thank you, Olga, for your comments. I uh, would like to say that we have a long list of, of uh, requests for the floor, uh, at least uh, 10. So and we have about 50 minutes remaining. I would like uh, now start imposing a little bit of uh, limitations in the speaking time. So next, uh, uh, next uh, is uh, Mexico. Uh, Maria Caballero, please. Thank you, Chair. Good morning, colleagues. Um, well, uh, I will be brief as uh, my colleague. Uh, my name is Victoria Romeo, sorry, um, from the Mexican government. Uh, this is my second year with the MAC. And uh, being very brief, Chair, I will um, just touch some of the points that my colleague Olga Cavalli already said because it's very, very important for, for not only for my country but uh, for the region that uh, the next couple of years will be extremely important. And one of the points I wanted to, to touch uh, upon was the participation of uh, developing countries. As Olga said, uh, uh, we have to really strengthen participation. Uh, and uh, Chair, here in Geneva, we, we see that uh, the knowledge of uh, IGFC is extremely limited, and I can say among uh, permanent missions or representatives of the, of the government. And, uh, this comes because one of the challenges that we have for the next year would be to include them in, um, in MAC preparation of the next uh, events. And uh, we have to take advantage that, that some of these uh, governments are represented here. And it's uh, in a way very paradox paradoxic that uh, well, uh, governments are deciding the future of IGF. Uh, they are, uh, their, their knowledge is uh, kind of limited and we can take advantage of having some of them here in order to have a, a successful conclusion at the uh, General Assembly, the, the adoption of the extension of the mandate of the IGF. The second point was related to what Olga already uh, explained about the integration of the regional and national perspective into the process. And the third point, Chair, that I wanted to talk, to talk this morning was the um, following up and outreach. And this comes along with, the, I, with what I was saying at the beginning of trying to, to be as much uh, as proactive as much as possible and uh, trying to, to share with the developing countries uh, uh, what uh, IGF is and what is been happening and uh, there are lots of uh, things going on and lots of uh, good work that is being done and uh, only it remains only in the in the community of IGF, and I think our challenge has to be to make it as wide uh, no, no, known as possible. Thank you, Chair. So thank you very much uh, for your comments. Um, I'm now uh, giving the floor to to Jim, Jim Pengast. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, this is Jim Prendergast with the Galway Strategy Group, not a member of the MAG, nor not a member of the incoming MAG or retiring MAG. Um, so I want to add some comments to some of the things that we've heard already and just reinforce and, and bring up some new issues. Well, first off, on the new formats that Izumi had mentioned earlier, um, as somebody who worked on some of the more creative and innovative and interactive sessions in the past, I think um, 
I could not agree more. I think one of the challenges we have with these new formats is some of the criteria that we use to evaluate the proposals. So for example, on diversity, um, when you don't have a panel, it's tough to have diversity on your panel. So I think we need to look at the evaluation criteria and take into account some of these new formats that we're trying to encourage. On the uh, best practices, I think that's a great innovation. Ton of thanks to Constance and ISOC for really getting that off the ground. Um, like any version 1.0, I think there's an opportunity to improve and I would suggest a couple of points. Uh, more lead time to advertise and get the word out about the best practices sessions. I know last year we were challenged with the calendar. We started late and we had a very early IGF. I think the calendar for this year sets up well for that and will only help us get the word out to more participants and um, get their input as well. Um, the outcome documents, you know, I think I'd like to see a little more visibility into how the feedback from the community was synthesized and considered and either accepted or rejected uh, into the final documents. I think that would um, provide some valuable feedback to folks as those documents are developed. And then finally, um, you know, uh, picking up on a comment over to the right about the day zero events, I think a little more clarity around the day zero events and the role they play in the IGF or the role that they don't play. I remember hearing in one of the sessions uh, on Monday in Istanbul that the, you know, in, in an effort to try and encourage more participation from the group, there was a comment to the effect of, well, what we're seeing here is going to be forwarded to the chair for inclusion into the final report. And I don't think that was the, the situation. I don't think that's what we had intended for the day zero events. So just a little more clarity around that I think would help um, delineate those from the official IGF schedule as opposed to providing an opportunity for folks to have events on the edge. But overall, uh, excellent event in Turkey, great logistics. I heard some of the issues that folks had raised about logistics. I personally never experienced any of that. So either I was lucky or um, it, was a, it was a good session overall. So thank you very much. So thank you, Jim, for your uh, feedback. Um, just to say that I will uh, give floor first to those who have not spoken yet, and then we'll come back to the to the, those who are asking second time for the floor. Um, I can is next on my list. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and uh, good uh, good is it afternoon? Good afternoon to you and. Uh, fellow participants. Uh, this is my, uh, I'm Nigel Hickson by the way, this is my, my first open consultation. I'm not a MAG member, uh, I haven't been a MAG member, and uh, yeah, I haven't been to this open consultation before, so it's uh, a pleasure to be at it. So a couple of reflections, I suppose, on, on Istanbul and then looking forward. Uh, and I realize there's always a balance on how much we look to the past and how much we look to the future. Certainly Istanbul was uh, very enjoyable. I think it was very constructive. I think it was very productive. Uh, it was well organized. It was in the right place at the right time. It allowed participation, as uh, has been said by Turkey and others, from a, a wide variety of stakeholders, from a wide variety of, of countries. Uh, and in that, I think that's exceptionally important because the Internet Governance Forum, if it's anything, it has to be diverse, it has to in attract participants, it has to be dynamic, it has to be relevant. And I think Istanbul passed those tests. Yes, one can always look at individual things that one would have preferred to have uh, done better. I mean, I think some of the practical comments have been made already Perhaps some of the panels were too large, people spoke for too long, but then <laughs> that's always a, always a difficulty. I always have some confusion about day zero. Inherently, I don't like day zero. I think it's a, one of those phrases which uh, is, is, is rather, uh, I can't think of the right English word. My English is not very good. But <laughs> I, I think day zero has the sort of connotation of, uh, and it's superficial. It's vacuous. Is that, is that okay? I think I'm getting the message across. I, I, I think it's good to have side events. Great, let's have side events. Let's, you know, let's have fringe events, birds of a feather. That's another great expression, isn't it? But you know, let's do that. But let's not have events that are 
you know, restricted to certain people. You know, if we're going to have if we're going to have events on the fringe, then you know, invite people to come to the fringe and and uh, whatever. But uh, I think we need to refocus uh, refocus day zero. I think the point that Avery made about participants is 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 really important, and I think this gets back to the panelists in let's be a bit more innovative on how we how we involve people in terms of a, a process. And uh, some of us were privileged to be at the uh, Geneva Internet uh, Platform Conference uh, a couple of weeks ago here and saw innovative ways of including uh, everyone, including remote participation. And there, again, I think uh, there's some lessons to be learned, perhaps from Net Mondial in terms of having hubs, which seem to work so incredibly well and was so evocative. So looking to the future, I think there are a number of substantial issues that no doubt will be, have to be tackled in, 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 in Brazil. And as you said yourself, Mr. Chairman, the WISIS Plus 10 uh, review and how that's going to be uh, formatted and formulated is exceptionally important. And that really brings us to this, this notion of is the IGF an IGF meeting with regional and national meetings, or is it a dynamic process? And I think it has to be the latter. I think as we, we go forward in this incredible and ever-increasing internet sort of with a political internet governance with a political and a social dimension, then the internet governance forum comes into its own as a dynamic process. And I think that's, you put your, you put your hand on it when you said that in terms of the WISIS plus 10 preparation, it's no good just coming to the meeting in November and being presented with a paper that's been negotiated by governments and then the stakeholders saying, we don't like this paper because legitimately it will be too late. Multi-stakeholderism implies that we have to be involved in the early stages of this preparation and therefore your comments about intercessional dialogue, whatever, I think is absolutely right. And to finish, I think the, that whole notion of dynamic IGF brings into, brings into context of the resources that are available to the IGF. The IGF is a unique experience. It's a unique way of getting people that aren't involved in internet governance issues involved. And we owe that to the wider community and we owe that to the community that aren't involved in these issues at the moment. And therefore, the resources in the MAG, the resources that the UN uh, give to this process, and I know there's many calls on, on, on UN time and resources, but I think that's incredibly important as we move forward. Thank you. Thank you, Nigel, for your comments. So we can call, instead of the day zero, we can call it pre-event day, <laughs> if, you, if you wish. Uh, but one, one, one thing, I mean, it does not matter how we call it. The one, uh, we need to understand what purpose that serves, and that, that, that I uh, noted well. Uh, next on my list is delegation of Egypt. Thank you, Chair. Uh, my name is Christina Arida. I am speaking on behalf of the government of Egypt. And I have the honor of working with the MAG representing uh, Egypt as a former host of the IGF. First, I would like to express on behalf of Egypt our appreciation and congratulation uh, to the government of Turkey for the successful hosting and organization of IGF 2014 meeting in Istanbul. I would also like to thank the Secretariat for uh, the excellent and comprehensive synthesis of comments and contributions. Valuable comments have been expressed by many colleagues. I will not uh, try to be repetitive, but would just like to briefly emphasize a few specific points. Uh, that is one, uh, the importance of providing stronger and more inclusive linkages to national and regional initiatives, uh, not only within the IGF meeting itself, but also during the preparatory process. For that, I believe uh, there may be merit in providing both space and support intercessionally uh, for engaging and integrating national and regional IGFs, especially from developing uh, regions and to have uh, them provide input early on in developing the program and to be inspired by discussions that are happening within their own regions. 
I would also like to join Marlin in expressing how valuable it is um, to make available space for different side meetings and events. For that, I thank both the host of IGF 2014 and the Secretariat for providing support to the Arab IGF MAG to meet over two days in Istanbul at the venue, although this was even prior to the pre-event day. Um, I have to say this had a quite positive impact on the overall engagement and participation from the Arab region and the IGF meeting itself. I also see value um, in the idea expressed by Constance earlier to focus on one theme per day than having uh, one main session at, uh, on that theme at the end of the day to capture discussions. Finally, um, Egypt is looking forward to the Brazil meeting and thanks Brazil for hosting the IGF for the second time. Thank you. So thank you very much. Before uh, giving floor to uh, Hossam, uh, I will ask uh, our uh, remote participation uh, participant to be uh, either to speak or to be, to be read out. I will read very shortly for Andriette, who is in South Africa and speaks as part of APC. Some day zero events are actually very substantial and provide the opportunity to talk about specific issues in detail. For example, the Net Mundial event and the sexual rights pre-event. The event we feel should be evaluated is the high-level event for governments. Is it really succeeding in achieving its goal of increasing government participation? Can this be evaluated? The MEG assesses the extent to which the current high-level pre-event with government, government's formats is effective in facil facilitating government participation in the IGF. But the statistics seem to indicate it's not working that well. So I propose an evaluation and for Brazil to take learning into account for next year. Thank you. So thank you, Anjet, for your proposal. I see Benedicto is write, writing it down. <laughs> Hassan, please. Yeah, floor. Thank you, Chair. Well, uh, my name is Hossam El Gamal, and um, I represent uh, Africa ICT Alliance and ICC Visas. And um, I come from Egypt. Uh, this is my second year on the MAG, and the first year for me was quite an eye opener. I've learned a lot, and um, uh, with the help of many existing and outgoing MAG participants, uh, it was a great opportunity. I, I just have a few comments. Um, uh, for the way the sessions are organized, I think more mind map organization style needs to be implemented. Again, uh, um, connecting best practice forum, intersessional work, workshops, uh, leading to the main session so that we, we have something well structured and uh, uh, no conflicts would take place. Uh, I think, mo <coughs> sorry. <coughs> Uh, again, something important is we need really to allocate uh, more specific time to uh, 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 the floor for participation because with too many on the session itself, we don't have really time for the floor to express and uh, we don't get enough input from the floor. Uh, I think we need to, to engage more from now till the IGF time uh, in making more outreach uh, and this is I think one of our uh, objectives is making more outreach uh, towards other and different stakeholders and I want to mention here again um, that we have many stakeholders that we need to engage especially in sectors of great interest for developing countries health education uh, finance, agriculture, energy. Uh, we need more participants from this, uh, from government, from business, from academia, technical and in, uh, users. Uh, we need to see the challenges uh, for access for those sectors and we need to see how uh, internet can make a difference for those sectors as well. Thank you very much. So thank you, Hossam. Uh, for your reflections and comments. And now I'm turning to uh, uh, Liang Guo. Okay. 
Okay. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, my name is Guo Liang. Uh, I'm a researcher for Chinese Academy of Social Sciences. I'm also an outgoing uh, MAC member. will be retired after this MAC meeting. Uh, I think MAC is not just a place to work, but also a place to learn. I think I learned a lot, uh, and more than I contribute to what I contribute to the MAC. Uh, uh, I would like to uh, also thank all the MAC members. Uh, uh, I, I, uh, during the last uh, 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 IGF meeting in, in, in Istanbul, uh, I participated in a, a workshop on uh, develop, developing countries' participation. Uh, the panelists mainly talk about uh, uh, education, uh, teach uh, developing countries how to participate. Uh, but uh, I, I, I would like to share my comments. At first, I intended to share my comments during the open microphone session, but I thought there are too many Mac members <laughs> taking the um, open microphone, so I, I would like to share it here. I think the more important keywords is not education and uh, language uh, barrier, but motivation why developing countries wants to come to uh, IGF, to uh, what, what they can get, what they can learn, and what they can contribute to, to IGF. Uh, that's more important than these difficulties. I'm happy that I remember the three years ago when I first attended a MAC meeting, I raised question to have more developing countries participate. And the last year, I raised question. It, it sounds fair if we have the same standard to e evaluate uh, this workshop proposals. But actually, it's not fair to de developing countries. And I'm happy this year we, we have special consideration to these uh, uh, developing countries. Uh, I just heard from Izumi that uh, the, the World Internet Conference in uh, in China, re recently, uh, at least it showed Chinese government wants uh, willingness to participate in uh, World uh, IG. But uh, I I've been MAC member for three years. Up till now, I have never heard a formal speech from Chinese government. I wish <laughs> uh, uh, in, in the near future, I wish I could hear. Thank you. <clears throat> So thank you very much. Uh, now <coughs> I'm turning to Cisco. Chip Sharp. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Chip Sharp from Cisco Systems. I am observing, uh, I'm a, not a MAG member or previous MAG member. And my comments here are, are mainly uh, are my own. I don't represent Cisco's view, position on anything, but observations from the last uh, IGF was the second IGF that I attended. I think it was, uh, I had a much, I guess, better time, a much or more organized time, I think, due to some of the logistical improvements. Uh, first, I, wanna, I do want to congratulate and thank uh, Turkey for being such a great uh, host of the event. Uh, it's a little bit daunting having a meeting in Istanbul, considering the great history the city has. It's a crossroads of civilization, uh, you know. And I also look forward to uh, the meeting next year in Brazil as well, uh, and a good meeting I anticipate there as well. A couple of things uh, to go uh, to mention. I think a lot of these issues have already been exp uh, covered, so I won't try to cover everything, but. Quickly, uh, I was just concurring with the input from Mr. Pendergrass concerning the best practice forums. Uh, I think we had a very truncated schedule last year, and I think this year we could, will have much more time to, uh, to work on these things before the uh, IGF meeting. Uh, one thing is uh, thinking out in terms of how the uh, best practice forum reports evolve. Uh, the reports that I looked at identify you know, further work needed, and the you know, question is, you know, how do we keep the best practice reports up to date? while adding and working on new issues. And that is a concern. Uh, I look forward to uh, you know, working with ISOC, and I, I appreciate the work that Constance did in bringing these things together. I think it was uh, very good considering the short time frame we had. Uh, other intersessional work, uh, one concern I have is you know, if the intersessional work is to produce output, uh, we need to, the MAG needs to clearly identify what the goal is and what the output will be 
Uh, how will out input be included in that work? Uh, and what process will be used to decide what goes into the, uh, to the intersessional work and how it gets into the output? Uh, we look forward to working on that further as well. Uh, with this 10-year uh, review, I think uh, Mr. Hickson also mentioned this. Uh, I am hoping there will be consultation before November. Uh, of course, you know, I don't, I'm not in charge of that process and other people will be deciding these things, but I think earlier consultation will be necessary in order to actually have any input to what comes into December. Uh, I don't oppose any kind of, I, I, do, I do like the idea of having some discussion of that at the IGF. Um, but I think actually starting at that point is a little bit too late. Um, and logistics, uh, just one quick thing. The, I appreciate the online schedule. It helped keep things organized. Uh, but I would like an easier way to get the online schedule into my local calendar uh, for those times when I'm not actually connected to the network. Uh, it, it'll be easier to get to the right, right session time. Thank you very much for your help, and thank you for your work. Bye. So thank you. I hope you will stay with us. You said bye. Uh, but I hope you will still still uh, continue continue with us. So now I'm 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 going to uh, invite uh, Kosi Amesinu to take the floor. Kosi, please. Samash. Merci, President. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I thank the ITU Secretariat and the organizing country, the host of 2014, for the hospitality which we have received. And I urge the organizers of 2015 IGF to do the same or better. In fact, there are challenges which we have managed to accept but there are others as so much is at stake when we have high level meetings at the opening and closing sessions we see that the regional representation is not always there it would be very interesting that each region of the world be properly represented so that the point of view of the regions be heard as the stakes are not the same in various regions so we could do that at the opening and closing sessions especially at the opening sessions and then at the closing sessions we would probably wrap up and see to what extent these comments have been taken into account then there are parallel sessions this can be well managed if the topical workshops but the parallel sessions are confusing for the new members of MAG. I was lucky to be there in 2014 with someone from the public administration, but I needed to understand many things. It had to be explained to me at the end of IG IGF. Uh, at the end of IGF, I had the feeling that something was missing. So perhaps we are not using the most efficient way of uh, uh, at, um, speaking to people who are there for the first time. How do we convey the information to the high-level persons who arrive? Uh, how this information is transmitted is very important. and if there are good uh, um, practices we'd like to use them I'm from Benin we would like in Benin very much to adopt these good practices but of course we have to base on what has already been achieved so the past experience is very important for us the question of education health agriculture all of that can be helped with the ICTs and the technology I have also noted that we have specific sessions for regional discussions, yes, but frequently the same people who take the regional decisions and come time and again in order to state the same points. We ha 
is it possible to have these interregional sessions rather so that the regions share their experiences see whether instead of having parallel sessions <clears throat> in an isolated room then the regions could have a greater exchange now I'd like also to urge the ac actors who were participants in the parallel sessions to participate more because there was a linguistic barrier after all each time when we were switching from one room to another we had to check whether interpretation was provided for participants if it is provided then the people can benefit best thank you for attention sir uh, merci, Kossi, for, uh... thank you Kossi, for these comments and now I turn to Mrs. Ho Bianca, Carolyn, you have the floor. Hi, uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, this is Bianca from Net Mission in uh, Asia, which is a civil society in Asia, and I'm a new MAG member. So I really want to thank um, MAG for having uh, youth members on uh, here this year. And there are three other young members, including uh, myself, Ibrahim Percy Kenyan Nito, as well as Ida Mamutovic. I'm sorry for the bad pronunciation. Um, we are very thankful for having a main session with interpretation for the workshop 173, the youth involvement in internet governance, and also a young member to speak uh, at the closing session. I think that was a very promising um, uh, progress that we've seen with uh, youth participation. Uh, as mentioned earlier in the synthesis uh, paper, uh, we already talked about better youth participation, but uh, it hasn't been elaborated, so I just have a few ideas in mind. I think one of the good ways would be to build a resource platform for intersessional work as a dynamic process. Um, for example, things like a youth-friendly toolkit, which could be incongruent with a capacity building um, idea to better prepare and have a better quality of the discussion in IGF with youth. Um, the other thing is also to engage more youth in panels, uh, which they might be experts in the, uh, the panel topics that you might mention. So there's an idea of um, having a youth resource person um, uh, as a platform so uh, people can share you know, what youth are good at and you can also look for the right uh, youth members to participate in your panels. Uh, the other thing that I think would be important is to have reporting. So I've heard a lot on gender reporting. Um, it would be also good to see there's reporting on youth participation. Um, number three, I think as members, one of the main things that we can do is we can be a mentor of youth members or even you MAG members as, and myself. I, I would find that greatly useful. And uh, number four, I think for the Brazilian IGF, we would love to see more local youth engagement and we would be very happy to help with that process as well. Thank you, Chair. So thank you very much. Uh, Matthew is next. Matthew Sears. Thank you, Chair. Matthew Shears with the Center for Democracy and Technology. Uh, much has been said, so let me just pick up on a couple of things. Um, we very much support Oriette's comments on day zero. We felt day zero was an uh, incredibly substantive and valuable um, uh, uh, event. And um, we also support the notion that we need to do as much as we can to improve the high-level event. And if that means an evaluation of sorts, then that would be incredibly useful. We also support intersessional work. Um, our suggestion, I think it's already been made actually, is that this intersessional work is a good way of drawing a thread through the national and regional IGFs as well. So perhaps we can find subjects for the intersessional work that can be discussed at different levels across the year for 2015. Um, we need to give local activists a far better voice. Um, I have to say that probably of all the, the, the criticisms one might have of uh, IGF Istanbul, it was our inability for whatever reasons to actually to be able to give activists a voice in the IGF and that, that does need to be addressed. Um, we talk about strengthening outputs, outputs and I'd like to talk, just, just make a, a, put a pointer in for the um, Friends of the IGF website because 
Finding uh, the accessibility of reporting and the videos on the IGF website itself is not that easy, but um, fortunately there's this other website that you can go to and, and search through the videos, and that's an excellent resource. And finally, also on the issue of outputs, I'd like to highlight the reports from the best practices forums that I understand have only just been put up about a, a week or so ago. Um, those are, and I'd just like to point to the one on spam and certs, those are incredibly useful and substantive outputs um, and uh, are, are definitely the kind of materials that we want to be looking at uh, contributing to and, and, and creating going forward. Um, and then, of course, the question has to be asked, how are we communicating those reports and those outputs to influencers and policymakers. And I think that comes to an issue that I'm assuming will be discussed over the next two days, which is how do we communicate better about the, uh, the substantive outputs of the IGF as a whole? Thank you. So thank you, Matthew. Uh, Netherlands. Thank you, Chair. Uh, I'll make it short. Uh, a lot has been written down in the synthesis paper and has been said in the room about improvement of the uh, IGF process. We uh, fully support uh, the, uh, the suggestion made. Uh, well, I have to express my, my name. And I'm Arnold van Rijn, Dutch Government Ministry of Economic Affairs. Uh, as I said, we fully share and support the, uh, many of the suggestions made. Uh, by, by the participants. And, uh, however, I would like to highlight uh, one thing, the need to have intercessional work. Um, I think we should have an online platform where discussions can continue between IGFs. Uh, perhaps that could be an uh, online spot on the website of the IGF where all stakeholders, national and regional IGFs, can meet and continue the discussion on uh, all kinds of Internet-related uh, uh, issues. Furthermore, uh, day zero, I noted the remark by ICANN that we should refocus uh, the program. Um, well, I ha don't have the experience of uh, being uh, uh, attendant uh, at the day zero because our Dutch IGF has always have our own program uh, in the, the host country by meeting uh, all kinds of stakeholders uh, to discuss uh, Internet-related uh, topics, and this has been very useful. Uh, however, one could think of perhaps uh, and, and, and a part of the program could be a meeting between the organizers of the national and regional IGFs together with the IGF Secretariat to share best practices and to see where we could strengthen ourselves much better. This could be perhaps a suggestion. Finally, um, Chair, last week from Europe there was a very clear and uh, strong political signal because the European Council concluded uh, uh, very important uh, conclusions on the uh, Internet governance uh, uh, process. And it was a strong support of the multi-stakeholder model as well as the support of uh, renewing the mandate of the IGF. And I think, Chair, uh, and it's now up to the, the IGF uh, to show that, uh, indeed, uh, there is life for this unique platform after 2015. Thank you. So thank, <clears throat> thank you very much, Arnold, for your comments and encouragement. Um, we are approaching uh, 1 o'clock, and it seems to me that we will not exhaust the list of speakers uh, before the before the lunch, and therefore uh, there are uh, there is a one new participant, a remote participant, and then there is another one who already spoke uh, in line. And maybe I will take I will take now uh, remote participants uh, in order. The, the first, uh, the one who has not spoken yet, and that is uh, Ephraim from uh, Kenyanito. Okay, uh, thank you for this opportunity. And uh, I just wanted to emphasize what uh, Bianca and Matthew talked about, uh, about local involvement. Uh, sorry, I'm Ephraim Kenyanito. Uh, I'm one of the new MAG members. Uh, thank you for this opportunity. So just to, to make it short, I just wanted to emphasize about uh, local en engagement and involving people uh, in the host country because uh, for example, during the workshop uh, 173 and the Youth Coalition Internet Governance uh, sessions, 
we had uh, a brief discussion with some of the young people who were serving and they were very helpful in uh, in the venue in Istanbul and some of them were not aware about the meeting until that that week before uh, it will be good to have uh, a way of uh, the host country especially in Brazil to reach out to young people in universities and uh, just local involvement so that they can be more aware about uh, why these discussions are important to them and uh, why they should participate. And then just to emphasize on uh, uh, Bianca's uh, point, uh, during the workshop 173 in uh, Istanbul and uh, the Youth Coalition, we, we had a suggestion of having a best practices forum on youth involvement and because you see that that's a challenge. We had one on child protection, which was... Uh, uh, it was it, it went really well, but uh, we would really suggest that uh, we take into consideration having a, a best practice forum on uh, youth involvement. Thank you very much. So thank you, uh, Efren, for your comments and suggestions. And now I'm turning to the uh, the next one. I think it's Subi. Subi, please, uh, uh, but please, uh, since you're talking second time, please try to be as brief as you can. Thank you, Yanis. I'll keep it as brief. Um, um, so I, I just wanted to highlight something from Net Mundial and the lessons that we learned and the ability to enhance multi-stakeholder participation and funding and process were an integral part of it. Um, we've been having a lot of conversation about enhancing new voices and their presence um, physically at the IGF. And I hope and pray that CGI.br, through its incredible ways and means, may continue to do the same at this IGF. IGF SA is also a new initiative, but we need as many resources to pull in um, to facilitate new voices. And that's one, one barrier that we can easily overcome. Um, because it's going to be expensive to get there. Um, one quick point on the high-level panel. I hope that we can also enhance both stakeholder and gender balance this time and explore if the high-level panel can be in the middle of the program because key government decision makers tend to leave by day two and we'd like them to be here and listen in. So this is one strong request if we can explore in terms of suggestions uh, for programming. And um, the third last point is um, about regional and national IGFs. A bit like the Nobel Prizes, when you recognize an issue, you give them a platform to go global. The main sessions at the IGF are a little like that. So if we can look at uh, creating more value and also putting the spotlight on regional and national initiatives. And to end my comments, I strongly support Bianca and Ephraim. The resource pool for youth and enhancing youth participation is an absolute must and I'd be delighted to join my young colleagues in this initiative. Thank you, Yanis. So thank you very much. Uh, next is uh, Jivan. Yes, hello. I'm sorry, I unfortunately wasn't able to attend uh, the uh, IGF in Istanbul because uh, in the last minute I was called in to go to the NATO summit and it was at the same time. Uh, but I was following it from uh, from the side, and not only just the, 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 what the discussions were developing, but with an eye on how uh, it was communicating to the world that is not following it directly. And I think that we still have uh, some improvements to uh, to do on this front. I think that we can communicate our messages messages much better, and what what is going on here uh, much better. So I think that. Uh, this is another thing that uh, I think that we should put it a priority between now and uh, next year to really develop a communication strategy, a strategic engagement. I don't know, the British government has been great at uh, developing this and, uh, and others as well. Uh, I think that between now and, uh, and, and Brazil, we have to uh, uh, think what are the messages that we, what are the things that we want to emphasize, not messages, but what are the processes that we want to emphasize, and not necessarily only from the IGF, but also from other processes, whether it is ICANN or other technical bodies that are going on. Our, our, one of our, uh, the things that we do is to put a spotlight on important internet issues, and that is something that we should do more actively, I think. Um, 
I, Turkey is a great host. I, I keep on hearing that, and I know that from being from the region, I have no doubt about that. Thank you for reminding us, Chair, that next year we'll be by the sea. That is frustrating enough to be able to, to work uh, with the coastline uh, close by, but uh, perhaps this is where the day zero comes in as a good thing, so we can acclimatize and uh, find out how to work uh, in such an, in, an environment. So uh, just that, uh, but I do think that we should put it as a priority to really think of a communication strategy and how to uh, communicate uh, the importance of uh, the internet governance process between now and Brazil and while we're at the IGF in Brazil next year. Cheers. So thank you, Jivan, for your very optimistic uh, comments and, and also for the proposal to think about strategic communications or uh, communication strategy rather. So uh, now I would like to invite uh, Tomela. Toela, sorry. Toela, take the floor. Thank you, Chair. My name is Toela Nyerenda Jere. I'm from the NEPAD agency, a technical arm of the African Union and I am a MAG member for the second year. Um, just a few comments which I will be very brief with, uh, mostly reinforcing what has already been said. Um, and the first thing is really on the high level uh, meeting on day zero and just getting a lot more clarity on the purpose and also the participation um, in that meeting. I think that um, there's missed opportunities in terms of engaging African governments in that process because of uh, perhaps the way in which the um, communication is, is actually done. And I think it would be useful to actually explore um, mechanisms that would actually engage um, more African governments to participate in that session. Um, we also want to register a concern about the speakers in the opening and closing sessions. Um, I think it has been expressed in terms of the lack of regional balancing, but I think there was also a very noticeable gender skew um, in those sessions. Um, on the remote participation, um, I would like to also echo the uh, need to actually um, consider how to work with and through the national and regional initiatives um, as far as strengthening um, remote participation. Uh, one of the challenges that um, I personally encountered with trying to set up um, remote hubs is that um, I think when you look at the messaging that comes from Secretariat, there is a tacit assumption that those who are organizing remote hubs are people who already understand the space. And I think we need to think about how do we actually reach out to people who may not be actively participating in the IG space, who may not even have an understanding of what a remote hub actually is, you know, beyond the description that is actually put up on the website and, and how one actually goes about um, organizing a remote hub. But I would also want to echo the comments that, um, you know, the remote participation and the remote hubs, I think this is something that needs to start much earlier and should be part of an ongoing process of engagement and not just um, focused on the event itself. Um, it's, as far as the visa issues, I do take note um, of the government of Turkey's um, efforts as far as e-visas, but I would also want to um, mention that this there were problems with visa um, applications, especially for some African participants. We could not um, get e-visas and we had to pay for the visas. So I think this is something that people have to look at, that it's not always um, very easy um, for African stakeholders um, when they want to participate in meetings because of visa issues and that this might also need to be taken into consideration. Um, in terms of the outputs that come out of the um, IGF, I think the chair summary and the best practice forums are a good initiative. And I think that there needs to be now a way of determining how those things are actually communicated to the different stakeholder groupings. And I think, again, that there is a need to maybe think through how to actually use the um, regional and national initiatives as channels for disseminating and communicating some of these messages. Thank you, Chair. So thank you, Tarala, for your, for your comments. Um, I uh, will now, before go, giving the floor to the last, uh, in, uh, last speaker this session, I will ask uh, Virat briefly to say uh, what, what you wanted to say already an uh, hour and a half ago. <laughs> I just, you know, I wanted to respond to some of the points that have been made uh, by a number of people uh, on the main sessions. I just want to very briefly make that, you know, it's a specific point. Um, firstly, we take 
uh, on board. I think the point, a very important point made by uh, every, we should start calling everybody <coughs> participants or delegates. Uh, we should all agree and, and move to that language, lingo, as it were. Uh, and secondly, I think uh, uh, her point about intercessional work carrying across IGFs and not something that ends at an IGF, I think those are two. Uh, we sort of support that. But let me just come to the main session because a lot of comments have been made, and that, uh, by the way, formulates that there are 25, 25 new MAG members, but that formulates a large part of what the MAG does apart from the scheduling. Uh, so here is the deal. We have about, um, in, in terms of numbers, uh, we have six um, stakeholders and five regions. So that's 30. On top of that, we have the need to balance gender and new voices. So even if you were to cut that by half and ignore half of those as representations in the, in the main sessions, you're down to 15 or 16. If they spoke for only six minutes each, two three-minute interventions, one their opening intervention, one perhaps a response, you're up to 96 to 100 minutes. So a two-hour session will leave you 20 minutes, including the moderator and the chair's comments, which I've not added in this. So we cut it to half, we limit them to six minutes, two brief sessions, and we still have a challenge. So as we discuss the main sessions, and somebody who, who arranged the main session with 16 of my MAG, MAG colleagues, I can tell you that there are some serious time related challenges which we must take into consideration as we get into the main discussion, but that's what it is. You can't get people into the main session and have them make a three-minute intervention and leave uh, after two hours. So we'll have to think about all of those points in view of the time limit and a meaningful main session. Thank you. So thank you. <clears throat> and the last speaker uh, for this uh, session will be Su Susie Hargrove. Thank you. Uh, my name is Susie Hargreaves. I'm uh, from the Internet Watch Foundation in the UK. Um, I, I work in the child online protection field, so I just wanted to raise a couple of issues in relation to that. First of all, there was quite a lot of concern, concerned feedback about the best practice guide on child online protection, as we felt it was a very rushed process, and in fact what it did do was duplicate, but not very well, the um, child online protection guidance practice pulled together by ITU, which we've all worked on for many years. So our message on that would be that we think any best practice guides need to add to and complement and add value to what's existing, but not try and replace. Um, the second concern I have is that if we move to theme days, that child online protection could potentially get lost, as it is currently seen as a marginal activity, and um, it needs to be focused at the heart of everything. Um, a third point on this is that there's a lot of talk about young people being more involved, and I would wholeheartedly endorse that 100%. But I think we need to also recognise that the issue of child online protection uh, relies on a multi-stakeholder approach, and, just in, and including young people won't be the answer in itself, that actually we need to ensure that all the relevant stakeholders are there, and in particular industry, who I don't think are that well represented at the IGF. Um, and then finally on another point completely nothing to do with child protection, I just wanted to raise the fact that I agree with previous speakers that uh, IGF is quite a, an intimidating process for people who are new. I've been to three IGFs, but certainly it's, it's quite hard to kind of know, you know where to go, what to do, who's what, where and how, and actually some kind of user-friendly introductory guide would be really helpful. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Susie, for your um, suggestions. So that, that brings us to the end of this, this morning's session. We had a very interesting and uh, fruitful exchange and gathered a lot of information that I will try to sum up uh, uh, during the afternoon session after listening interventions uh, from uh, other uh, participants. Uh, I have uh, three more on my list, uh, Marcos, uh, Leah, and ICC Basis. Uh, I see more. They're remote, and then there is also um, Bahir. Um, so we are breaking now, and we will resume at 3 o'clock sharp. And I mean 3 o'clock uh, Swiss time, not 3 o'clock international organization time. Uh,
uh, I, you, you, you saw that I did not specify <laughs> because this is a very generalized thing. So please, uh, 3 o'clock, be back in this room and we will resume our work. So thank you. Bon appétit. For those who are not familiar with this building, please, when you go out and you continue to the inner direction that, that you, how you came in, uh, where you got your badges, so there, there is a canteen, cafeteria, so that, that is, otherwise you can go out, there are a num number of restaurants uh, around this area. So thank you, see you at 3 o'clock. Okay. Can we get the directions to the donor meeting? This